tick 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 time tick tick there's no way around it it passes like it or not tick 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 but you can seize moments and make them your own for the texans such a time has come an opportunity a chance to stop start a new status quo beat the colts and fulfill a long cherished goal first place in the afc south it's time for monday night football is it their time well for houston the task is tall they have to win in indianapolis place and try to sweep one of the NFL's all-time best the Colts and Peyton Manning four and two the Houston Texans four and two an AFC South showdown on Monday Night Football as we begin the ESPN Monday Night Football launch engineered by Central Indiana we have a couple of teams in a very good division everyone in this AFC South is 500 or better this is a rematch of week one if we take you back there Houston put a lot into the season opener because of their 1 and 15 all-time record against the Colts they won at home by 10 physically dominated Indy and now are in a position tonight to sweep the Colts something that's only been done once since the AFC South started it's a chance for the Texans who've long been talked about as a team of the future to show they are a team of now and bring in Jaws and John Mr. Jaworski Mr. Gruden you know what all that talk about Houston is great but we're in India. It's a Peyton Manning town. This team has been decimated by injuries, Indy, on defense and offense. So where's the pressure the most on the Colts coming into tonight? I think it's on Peyton Manning. I mean, this game has the makings of a shootout, but Peyton Manning is missing some of his best weapons. Wide receiver Austin Collie, he's out indefinitely. And Dallas do it all Clark, he's not just out, he's out for the year. He's also missing his leading rusher, Joseph Adai. But I think the pressure also is on these young players that have to step up and fill in. Guys like Anthony Gonzalez, who's caught one pass in the last two years, but he's healthy again. Jacob Tammy will have to step up and become a go-to guy as a tight end. And also Mike Hart, the third string running back, will have to become the go-to back in the backfield. But the good news is for the Colts <laughs> is they still have the sheriff, Peyton Manning. And I don't care who his deputies are, the sheriff is ready to lay down the law tonight. Do you know Halloween was last night? Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> you too, Sheriff. Thank you. Uh, let me turn to Jaws quickly. I gotta follow that. <laughs> How many times have we said this is the biggest game the Texans have ever played? We're there again. You know, the question is, are they a team of now or are they just a decent team? On offense, they're a team of now, particularly with the emergence of Arian Foster, their running back. They now have excellent run pass balance in that first matchup between the Texans and the Colts. Foster had 231 yards. 191 in the second half they're able to ice the game away but let's get real here for the Texans it's about being explosive with Matt Schaub at quarterback having another rock solid year and he loves to throw to Andre Johnson big strong can run over people around people and can get the ball down the field there's no question this offense is very good in Houston thank you for not putting on a costume they're also really good in the red zone let's look at the Verizon red zone numbers when it gets inside the 20 tonight two terrific teams this is not getting field goals this is scoring touchdowns the Texans are the best the Colts are tied for second best thus far in the NFL this year you'll see it all in HD our telecast from Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis presented in high definition by Verizon we'll see if John has another costume in 30 seconds Well, Brett Favre keeps starting, so Peyton Manning gains no ground. Tonight, he makes his 199th start every game since he entered the league, a record for quarterbacks. Welcome back. Time now for Miller Lights. Taste greatness. We talked about all the guys who are not with Manning. He still has Reggie Wayne with him. Yeah, while well, John's been whining about all the players the sheriff doesn't have, let me talk about Reggie Wayne. It is the go-to guy. He is the go-to guy for Peyton Manning, particularly in the red zone. Watch this back shoulder throw. It's majestic. Nobody does it better than these two guys. Check it out from a different angle. You cannot defend this type of execution. Play the outside route. What are you going to get? The slant. Okay, play the slant. Play the outside route. What do you get? The fade. The chemistry between Reggie Wayne and Peyton Manning has been cultivated over 10 years. Now, in tonight's matchup, I think you'll see Reggie Wayne be moved around a lot. He predominantly lines up on the left side, 
But when you got all those receivers hurt, get Reggie Wayne to move him around so you can't double team him. Boy, they're all excited to see Houston. This is the worst pass defense of the NFL. And John, their defense took another hit in their last game. Well, they're last in a lot of categories on defense. They're close to last. They're also missing their Pro Bowl middle linebacker, D'Amico Ryans. And in this defense, the middle linebacker must defend the pass. And D'Amico was very good at that. It sure helps against Peyton Manning. You also have to be able to stop the run. You have to recognize blocking schemes, get off block, fall back and make tackles. And D'Amico was excellent at that. And occasionally you have to blitz. And D'Amico Ryans was very good when he was asked to blitz. He's out tonight, and the Texans will have a hard time replacing him, but they're going to turn to second-year man Brian Cushing, last year's Rookie of the Year on defense. If anybody can do it, Brian Cushing can do it. The only problem is he's squaring off against Peyton Manning, one of the all-time greats. I can't wait to see this matchup. The winner is in the division lead and one game behind New England for best record in the AFC. The Colts, the Texans, coming up on Monday Night Football. You've been watching ESPN's Monday Night Football Launch, engineered by TMC, the official vehicle of Monday Night Football. So we are ready for Monday Night Football. What a show this man has put on tonight. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. October 6, 2003. The game was billed as former Buccaneers head coach Tony Dungy's return to Tampa. But with four minutes left in regulation, his Colts trailed John Gruden's reigning Super Bowl champion Bucks 35 to 14 before the impossible occurred. Behind a determined Peyton Manning, the Colts scored three touchdowns in three minutes to tie the game with 35 seconds to go. The game finally ended in overtime with Mike Vanderjeff's 29-yard field goal bouncing in to give the Colts the improbable win. And he hits the upright, and it bangs through. In doing so, Indianapolis became the first team in NFL history to win after trailing by 21 points with less than four minutes to play. And now, it's the Texans and the Colts. Are you ready? Start your engines tonight. Ready? Come on and get ready. I mean, really ready. Are you ready for the football? A Monday night party. This is Hank and I'm ready. Let's get this picture started. Let's paint this town and do it up right. All my rowdy friends are here on Monday night. Love this stadium in downtown Indianapolis, Lucas Oil Stadium, that in 66 weeks hosts Super Bowl 46. The Colts of the team represented the AFC last year in the Super Bowl. Gary Kubiak of the Houston Texans hoping to take the lead here in the AFC South. The winner will be 5-2. Jim Caldwell's crew, like Kubiak's, both coming off. An off week last week, did not play, so as rested as they can be, but the Colts still dealing with many injuries. Indianapolis's offense will wait. It'll be Dwight Freeney. Mathis and company taking the field first because Houston won the toss and will receive here tonight. That's one of the stories that we're watching here for the Colts. The man who normally kicks off for them, Pat McAfee, is suspended for one game. He was arrested for public intoxication two weeks ago, so they brought in a new punter in Jeremy Kapanos, who did kick for Green Bay a couple of years ago. And he, not Adam Vinatieri, will kick off for the Colts tonight. And Jacoby Jones, a very good return man, back deep to receive for Houston. Now we'll get to see that Colts defense, which got gashed for 231 yards by Arian Foster in week one. Off we go as Indianapolis is missing a lot of the players for their normal special teams core. 
Matt Schaub, the quarterback, he was the MVP of the Pro Bowl last year, led the NFL in passing yards, and his stats this year are very good again. This is a guy, John, who continues to improve every year we see him as the Texan starter. Stayed healthy last year for 16 games. He's got great command. Fourth year with Gary Kubiak in this system, one of the more accurate quarterbacks in pro football. Drive start from the 32, a slant to Johnson. Gain of 11 for Andre. First down for Houston at the 43. Well, that's a one-step drop. They have a running play called. And Schaub has the freedom to pick it up and throw it. Take a look at Andre down here. Off coverage, that's easy pickings. Clint Session was on the blitz coming from the outside. Schaub read it quickly. As you said, John, one step, get it out, and attack the new starter at that right corner spot, Justin Tryon. Three tight ends and the throw out of that look for Dreesen. It was almost intercepted by Antoine Buffet, the safety cruising on in. Let's check the Houston offense, the starting offense. They've scored 25 a game. Balanced group since that 231-yard game in the opener against the Colts. Foster also has 200-yard games. We've seen Johnson, the four-time Pro Bowler, already. Up front, Dwayne Brown back after a four-game league suspension. Violated the performance-enhancing drug policy. And his welcome back, Dwight Freeney. Have a good night. Play action, they do a lot of bootlegging. Johnson's the only receiver on this side, and he worked very hard to come back, but couldn't stay in bounds. Ruled incomplete. Gary Brackett over there covering. The play action game will be critical for the Houston Texans this evening. That will hold the backside of the defense in their stretch running game. You see the hard fake by Matt Schaub coming up. But excellent anticipation by the defense of the Colts. Nowhere to throw the football early. Johnson came back late, but got it out of bounds. Well, keep an eye on Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis. This is the situation in this noise that these two guys love. Nobody better rushing the passer in their home stadium than these two guys. And Houston took a timeout. If you saw that, I think he caught it with two feet inbounds. But he went to the ground. He didn't control it. That means incompletion. Timeout, Houston. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by IBM. Let's build a smarter planet. Visit IBM.com slash smarter planet. Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at MBUSA.com. And NFL.com. Get the NFL's new mobile apps at NFL.com slash mobile. Third biggest city in the Midwest behind Chicago and Detroit, Indianapolis. And they'll rev up the voices for third down. Better get some help for these two ends. Holds rushing four. Freeney spins. Gets Schaub. And a sack. You don't want to ever be in third and ten against Dwight Freeney at home. And they must get help. Take a look at Dwayne Brown. Welcome back. Watch the spin move. <laughs> That is one of the premier moves. I hope he has a patent on that. Nobody does it like Dwight Freeney. And the Colts had four defensive ends as their four down line, and that's their NASCAR package. Speed after the quarterback. As Blair White, former walk-on from Michigan State. He's the punt returner tonight because of a couple of injuries. Matt Turk kicked it to him, and White from the 25 returns it 15 yards to around the 40-yard line. So good field position for Peyton Manning and the Colts. Let's give you the starters around Peyton on offense. Donald Brown out, or Donald Brown not starting, Joseph Adai out. So Mike Hart from Michigan starts. Dallas Clark's place taken by Jacob Tammy. The three receivers, Wayne, Garcon, and Gonzalez, who's played one game the last year and a half. Charlie Johnson over there at left tackle, Devan the left guard, and let's give a shout out to Jeff Saturday. He and Peyton starting the same game for the 161st time. That's an NFL record. Fran Tarkington and Mick Tinglehoff had it with the Vikings. And from the 40, Manning to work. For Tammy, couldn't bring it in and incomplete. That's the guy who will be wearing a lot of pressure. 
Here's the defense for Houston. Talk about Freeney on one side with Mathis. On the other side of the ball with Houston, you have Mario Williams and Antonio Smith built to try to get to the quarterback. Big story, as John alluded to, D'Amico Ryan's out because of the Achilles injury. Brian Cushing is the middle linebacker for the first time in his NFL career. Second-year corner, Quinn, rookie Jackson. Tested by Manning in game one. Part two of the exam tonight. Second throw for Manning, and this one's dropped by Eldridge. And right away, you see, without Dallas Clark, Tammy couldn't get to the first one. Eldridge dropped the second one. Well, that's a huge loss. Dallas Clark, 100 receptions a year ago, and Peyton Manning had great confidence in Dallas Clark. Here, Manning's got a receiver open. Eldridge has the ball on the perimeter, doesn't look the ball in and drops it. This is not going to be good for Peyton's confidence level in these inexperienced tight ends. Way to the slot of third and ten. Manning looking his way, incomplete, as he was covered, and three and out to get going for the Colts. That's very frustrating for Peyton Manning. You rarely see him start a game 0 for 3, but you have to credit the Houston Texans on defense. They held their coverage, and they get a key three and out stop. Brody Eldridge, a tight end that dropped that pass, played offensive line. A lot last year at Oklahoma. They don't have much experience at the tight end position at all. Capados kicking his first punt as a Colt. He's a lefty kicker. It's only 37 yards. And Jacoby Jones returns it to the 31. Field position is going to be a problem, I think, for the Colts in kickoffs and special teams. And see if the Peyton can get his tight ends going as we move through the night. Houston Texans came into the NFL in 02. So did Dwight Freeney. Robert Mathis came in in 03. And together they have had a great time rushing Houston quarterbacks during their NFL careers. First run of the game, Arian Foster with a good game to the 37. Ron? Yeah. And Dwight Freeney's excellent at reading the offensive tackle here. Dwayne Brown, he sets him up with the outside rush. Now, once he gets Brown flat-footed, you'll see the spin move back to the inside. He anticipates the flat-footedness of an offensive lineman. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that is quickness. I'm not so sure if he even set perfectly. You can stop that twister. Dwight's out of the game. Pianta Dawson in there playing right in. It's second and five, and it's Foster getting past Dawson, getting the first down. Pat Angerer and Aaron Francisco made the tackle. Boy, when Foster ran for 231, a lot of folks said, wow, Arian Foster, where'd this come from? Well, if you watch the SEC, you knew him out of Tennessee, a pretty good football player there, but disappointing in his last year. Foster earned the job at the end of last season with two good games and uh, made the splash at the start of the season with 231 against the Colts. Robert Mathis limped off the field after that last play. Jerry Hughes, the first rounder, in there for the Colts. A carry of three for Foster near midfield. Let's see if we can find out where Foster got, where Mathis got hurt. Well, these Texan wide receiver, there's Jacoby mm -hmm. Jones on the backside, cut blocking, and these Houston Texans do a phenomenal job on the backside, and these receivers are ankle biters. And sometimes they go in there with authority and cut these big defensive ends. That's difficult on these pass rush yep. specialists. That's the basis of the stretch running game. Stretch the front, seal the back. Derek Ward, who had a thousand plus yard season with the Giants two years ago, he's in, and Freeney almost had another sack on Shaw. This Dwight Freeney just bull rushes Dwayne Brown this time. He's going to set for speed, and Dwight just decides, I'm going to run right over you and get to the quarterback. That's called converting speed to power, and a lot of people underestimate Dwight Freeney's power. Extraordinary football player. What a start for Dwight Freeney. Five rush job, got rid of it quick. Jacoby Jones didn't hang on. So one first down picked up, but the Texans will kick it away. 
what happens to you Ron you played a long time you get hit a couple times by that guy and your feet get a little careless I think Schaub got rid of this just a little bit before he wanted to and you got to credit the Indianapolis Colts they've come in here and come off the ball early and gotten after Matt Schaub which is vital to their success but the Texans got to give Dwayne Brown some help over there once again they single blocked him the 42 year old punter Matt Turk outstanding hang time over his career and a nice job to fair catch it on the run by Blair White who handled that role with a plum in East Lansing at Michigan State the sheriff back on the field for drive number two when you come back so if you're sitting back watching boy I rarely see Peyton Manning open 0 for 3 throwing the ball you're right it's only the sixth time in 199 starts that he's opened 0 for 3 in the regular season he has never opened the game with four incompletions so we'll get Mike Hart in the mix with a run and Mike Hart into the secondary across midfield and out of bounds at the 44. How about that for a start the Indianapolis Colts are getting a lot of coverage looks and Peyton Manning loves to run this stretch play to what we call the three technique. Take a look at it. They capture the corner. They get a good perimeter block from Garcon and Mike Hart looks just like he did at Michigan Mike north and south all time leading rusher for the Wolverines his previous career long was 15 that was 35. This one is pushed back close to the original line of scrimmage. Antonio Smith made the tackle. Now let's focus on the Houston defense here, guys, because we have the change we mentioned at the top with Brian Cushing playing middle linebacker. So, Jaws, what are we looking for early with Cushing doing that for the first time in his NFL career? You know, I expect Peyton Manning to attack Brian Cushing, particularly with the play action. Now, right now, I'm seeing these Texans play a little bit of that cover two shell, those safety split, play action, try to hold Cushing and attack down the middle of the field. You see that two shell once again, only seven in the box to defend the run. Play action for Manning. A flag down as Wayne makes the catch. And Reggie works forward for the first down. First flag of the night thrown in the secondary. They got Bryce McCain for a holding call. Tony Carrenti's our referee tonight, John. He's a good man. Holding defense number 21. His penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. He's the one you like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> there is one. That catch yeah. puts Reggie Wayne over 10,000 career receiving yards. Well, it's at the top of the screen, and Garcon, you're going to see right here, gets the inside release, and McCain tackled him. Good call by the officials. This secondary for the Texans is the youngest secondary in football. A lot of first and second year players. Play action again. Peyton for Tammy. Jacob Tammy caught that one, made a great move on the back end to the seven. Well, they got Jacob Tammy matched up on Zach Dials. Jacob Tammy is a wide receiver as a tight end. You get him matched up on a linebacker, he's going to win. Here you see Zach Dials trying to undercut the route. Doesn't happen. Excellent throw to the outside. Here he is coming off the line. Zach Dials tailgated him. Good stick move to the inside. Breaks to the outside. He caught that one, John. I love to see guys step up when they get an opportunity. And that's a great confidence builder for Tammy. Seventh catch of his career. Longest of his career. 26 yards. First and goal. Mike Hart. Face mask. Looked like he was pulled down by the face mask. But maybe no one else saw it. Zach Dials was the one who had a hand by the headgear. Mike, I've never questioned your vision. <laughs> well, the fans, I think, they saw it on the replay here. Looked like Antonio Smith, Smith got him. Yep. That's pretty clear, guys. Yep. Whoa. Yes, it was. Remember, the Texans yep. are the worst defense in pro football in the red zone. They've given up 16 touchdowns and 20 drives. They need to get off here.
Manning to Hart. To the two. It was interesting. Peyton Manning was looking for Reggie Wayne running that corner route. And as he was delivering the football, he just took a little bit off it and checked it down to Mike Hart. You guys think a big part of this game is going to be what happens inside the 20s both ways. Well, we said it was going to be a shootout. We've seen the Texans get three and out twice already. But I do believe at the end of the day, it's going to come down to touchdowns in the red zone. And Peyton Manning's looking for one-on-one -on -one isolation here. He's got Reggie Wayne at the bottom of the screen. Here. You know, they go zone here. They love that little screen pass in the middle. Manning, Tammy, touchdown Indianapolis. <laughs> That's a really good matchup. We get Jacob Tammy matched on Bernard Pollard. Bernard Pollard has problems in coverage. He's kind of a zone three safety. You'll see Tammy come off the line. Uh. Just a stick nod go right over the top of Bernard Pollard. Kapanos, the new punter, is the holder for Adam Vinatieri. And he knocks it in. The 380th touchdown pass of Peyton Manning's career is the first NFL touchdown reception for Jacob Tammy. And the folks in Indy hope there's a lot more of that this year. Like all great rivalries, this one is alive with emotion and meaning. The Bengals dominated the Steelers last season. Now Pittsburgh looks for payback on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Seasons aren't decided halfway through, but it's a save the season game for the Bengals. Two back with a head-to-head -head win over the Steelers if they win. See you from Cincinnati next Monday night. Did I say Peyton was 0 for 3 on the first drive? Yes, you did. About 4 for 4 on that drive. And Jacob Tammy gets the touchdown. Are you shocked? Uh, no, no, I kind of expected I didn't that. think so. John, you know what shocked me? Seven to ten snaps for the Colts. They've had two tight ends on the field. We thought they're really short at tight end. They're staying with what they do. Another Capino's short kickoff. Jacoby Jones from the nine. Good return man. And Blair White, who's returning for the Colts, takes him down at the 32. Let's see if Schaub and the Texans can answer for their third drive after this. Well, the quarterback class of 2004, it involves the Houston star Matt Schaub, who was selected by Atlanta. Of course, Eli Manning has won a Super Bowl. Ben Roethlisberger's won two. Rivers has been highly decorated for his passing skills, getting the Chargers to the playoffs. J.P. Lawson did not work in Buffalo. But there was Schaub taken 90th overall in the third round by Atlanta. Served as the backup for Michael Vick for a couple of seasons there. Had a start. Was traded to Houston and has since taken off with Gary Kubiak as his head coach. Hands to Arian Foster there for a game of about eight and a half. Ron, give me a read as we're in Matt Schaub year seven. You know, we never questioned his ability to throw the football, read defense, and be accurate. Last year, he took a quantum leap by showing his toughness. About a quarterback, you have to be available to your team. He had the injured shoulder. He sucked it up. He played every single week. That plays well in the huddle and in the locker room. So now you've got a tough quarterback as well as a talented one. Another run with Foster. Bracken and Angerer make the tackle. It's a first down for Aaron Foster. Well, this Texan running game is off to a great start, and that's the challenge for the Indianapolis Colts. They're playing a lot of split safety looks. They're trying to help their corners. And when you do that, you are light in the box. And they are right now running over the Indianapolis Colts. That was a big concern and a challenge of defensive coordinator Larry Coyer coming in here tonight. They got hammered in round one up in Houston. And right now, the Texans are running the ball with authority. Third straight run, Foster. That time the initial tackle was made by Robert Mathis, limiting the game. Just to let you know more about Foster, terrific high school player in Southern California, ended up going to Tennessee. Three good years and then disappointing in his last season. That and some folks questioned his work ethic. It's the reason he slipped out of the draft as an undrafted free agent was signed by Houston. 
lingered on their practice squad, opened eyes, and then had a very good last two games of 09. And in 2010, when the opportunity came, he won the job in the preseason, had the big 231 against Indianapolis, and 635 rushing yards coming into this season. After four straight runs, I'm going to throw to Derek Warren out of the backfield. Shown the sideline by Kelvin Hayden and Kubiak told us we have to get Ward, the former Giant and Buccaneer, in the game more tonight. He's an excellent receiver out of the backfield. He gives this offense a little bit of punch. You can get him ball down perimeter. He can run over people. He can make people miss. And he also gives Aaron Foss a little time to catch his breath. And he's six foot one, 230 pounds. He needs a blow, and they go to their veteran, number 32, Derek Ward. Third and two, they'll throw for it. Back shoulder throw for Walter. Incomplete, covered by Justin Tryon, who Washington traded here earlier this year. And Daniel Muir had pressure up the middle against Matt Schaub. That forces any quarterback to get a little antsy, get a little hmm. quick when people come up in your face. At least leaving the offense out there. Not sure if they'll go for it on fourth and two. I like this. I think Gary Kubiak has to come in here tonight and match score for score against this Colt offense. He does not want to fall behind to Peyton Manning in this building. I like this move. Yeah, but you don't want to give Peyton Manning a short field either, John. If they don't get Time it, out. it could be trouble. Timeout. Timeout from the sideline called by Kubiak in Houston. They come out to call the timeout there before this fourth and two. You can see the decision was made, but there was trouble hearing for Schaub in the in the headset from Kubiak, the head coach who's calling the plays, and a little bit of the advantage of playing at home makes it hard to hear. No doubt. Gary Kubiak told us they are a completely different team, the Indianapolis Colts, at their stadium. But Matt Schaub and Gary Kubiak told us, Ron, we have to make every possession count. They're 0 for 2, and they're well on their way to 0 for 3. They need to get something done here. You know, a bunch of you bouncing back and forth between the World Series and us. We understand. We're sports fans. We'd be doing the same thing. We'll keep you updated on what's going on here when you come hang with us. Matt Schaub and the Texans have struggled against an Indianapolis secondary that's depleted. Dwight Freeney, with good pass rush early, has stunted the first three Texans drives. Meantime, Peyton Manning opened 0 for 3 without Dallas Clark. His tight ends didn't get the job done. Second drive, 4 for 4. Touchdown pass to Jacob Tammy. Mike Hart had a big run in it. And the Texans, after the timeout, still look like they're going to go for it on fourth and two. Man to man. Freeney rushes off the top. A slant is incomplete. They went back to Walter on Tryon, who made the play. And it will be Indianapolis ball in great field position. How about some of these Indianapolis Colts that have stepped up on both sides? Justin Tryon just got here. This ball is going to be a slant. It's going to be thrown over here to the left. Schaub has good enough protection. It's man to man, and Tryon just drove on Mike Walter, made a great play. Played inside technique, timing perfect. But when you look at this Colts secondary, Justin Tryon, Deshae Townsend, number 23, is playing. Francisco playing at safety. These guys barely know each other. And here's the negative, John. You've now yep. given Bate Manning a short field. Donald Brown back in the game. His first carry, barely a yard. Amobi Okoye, his fourth year out of Louisville, made the tackle. There's Jaws, the Manning numbers, drive one, drive two. They established a little bit of the run early. Yeah, no question. If you're going to defend this Colts defense with seven in the box, Peyton will run the football. You start bringing that safety down, then he's going to get aggressive. He handles this offense, calls these plays at the line of scrimmage. The defense dictates the plays he's going to call. So you're always running and passing into good looks if you're on this Colts offense because of Peyton Manning. the middle gain of a couple of yards Donald Brown was taken back into the first round in 2009 with the hopes that he and Joseph Adai would be a good one two tandem Adai Houstonian is out after injuring his shoulder against Washington Brown has had very little inactive the last three really only had one game where he was a significant part of the offense that against the Giants in week two and this is interesting Manning's having a hard time getting the plays yes. from Clyde Christensen 
And a lot of this has to do with the new players playing at key positions. Look in the backfield now, you see Jacob Tammy playing fullback. On third and six, Manning has to step up and run. Sliding, it's where you start the slide. And Peyton's negotiating for a little more yardage. But he's going to be just short of the first down. Wow, that was interesting. It looked like he had the first down. It is challengeable. He wants to go for it because he sees that they're short. Well, it's man-to-man -man coverage. Texans didn't protect the pocket very well. And how about those wheels? Yeah, I think he'll challenge. This will be a first down. Peyton uh, questioning the spot by the line judge on that side. It's his first run for a game since last November. It's where that's the ball is when the slide begins. That's a first down. Yeah. Easily. But where the mark is, yeah. it's not. Well, where the mark is, I agree right. with you. There'll be a challenge here. By rule, when the quarterback goes into a slide, the ball is dead at the moment in which he first contacts the ground, and the ball is spotted at that spot. It is short, fourth down. Well, this is when you're the head coach on the field. You should be getting information from upstairs. You have a coach or two that are looking at these replays, and they will challenge. That's exactly what Jim Caldwell's going to do. And he stayed up long enough as that slide began, so he's over the line there. I think he will get to the other side of the Texans 43 and would be a first down if the spot has changed. And Peyton over to have a conversation. Indianapolis is challenging the ruling on the field of the progress of the quarterback in relation to a first down. With the headlinesman, John McGrath. And applaud Tony Corrente for great use of the microphone explaining why it was spotted there. We'll see what he sees in replay after this. Well, it's rare you hear this, and the Colts are on TV so often. We're checking and challenge here a Peyton Manning scramble <laughs> where the ball <laughs> spot was. He obviously does not uh, run very often. He's such a good under understanding of the game and the rules and everything else and knows when to get down. And you'll see where the slide begins and where the ball is spotted. Tony Carrenti had a look in replay and he'll explain to everyone where it is and if the Colts have fourth down or first down. After reviewing the play, when the quarterback first came to the ground, the ball was at the 42 and three quarter yard line, resulting in a first down. I'm getting pretty good at this. Will not be charged with a timeout. And they can earn a third challenge if they have a second successful one. I'm sorry, what were you patting yourself on the back for? <laughs> oh, no, I'm just, I think I'm five for five. The challenges? Uh, just checking That's my stats great. out here. That's terrific. Well, how about that? It's how are you as a coach? <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a couple of years since Peyton Manning has run for a first down, and Houston has seen that before. See, right here, he's yeah. having a hard time getting the play from Clyde Christensen, and this does not go over well with Peyton Manning. And Clyde Christensen told me, this Peyton Manning, he's a handful to coach. When things don't go right, I hear about it. It looks like his communication system is down, though, John. Brown is the back. Donald can't get back to the original line of scrimmage. Sean Cody out of USC came over and made the play. Of course, Tom Moore forever had been the offensive coordinator for Peyton's forever since he was here. Tom is now the senior offensive assistant. Clyde Christensen moved up to be the offensive coordinator for the Colts. There's Tom Moore. He's the guy for about 12 years that worked with Peyton Manning. And he's responsible, that man, for creating a monster. <laughs> and here he is. And he's been loose on the NFL defenses for years. Manning to Donald Brown. In the open field, Kareem Jackson makes the play. Gain of a couple. What, what do you mean by that? Go back to when Tom Moore first got Peyton Manning out of Tennessee. Well, he taught Peyton Manning a system of football. He's like that professor, that scientist on Jurassic Park. And he created a monster. He taught a guy a system. <laughs> and this guy's been in the same system for 13 years. He understands every nuance of every defense in football. And he's always on the attack. And by the way, he's got unbelievable talent. Manning is 
was pressured and brought down. Mark Anderson came off the edge to get to Manning and gets the sack. Anderson who played his first four years with Chicago and early this year as well. And the Texans are not a team that blitzes a high percentage of time, but they bring the heat here. They bring five after Peyton Manning. They got the one-on-one -on -one blocked and they took advantage of it. You'll see Anderson just turn the corner quickly on Charlie Johnson and gets the sack. Right around Johnson, who was uh, out for most of the first month of the year with a sprained right foot. Through a quarter in Indianapolis, the Colts lead 7-0 on Monday Night Football. Manning and the Colts lead 7-0 as we get ready and prepare for the game. We watched Peyton in the first quarter. I've been interested in Jaws and John, what you guys have seen, some specifics. John, show us some of what makes him so special. Well, his work ethic, details, very important. And when it comes to ball handling, I think he's the best in the world. Watch him extend the ball. He gets away from the center, and he shows the football to the linebackers or to the defense. And watch him fulfill the fake. He's going to come out of this fake. I can't tell which one is a handoff and which one is the play action. This guy studies himself. Here's the trap. Take a look at it. He sees the ball in. Good job by the back rolling over the football. And Manning sets up. You don't know if he's handing it off or throwing it. And this comes from years and years of practice. The details, the work ethic, the practice time that this man has put into his profession sets him apart, Ron. You know, when I talk about Peyton Manning, I talk about those mental attributes as well. You saw the physical attributes, but the mental attribute of instant recall and application because of that work ethic, that study, that tape study, when he sees something on the field, he knows the void, the weakness of the defense, and he attacks. That instant recall and application is critical to the Colts' success, and that's one of the reasons Peyton Manning, clearly one of the best quarterbacks in the history of this league, here in Indianapolis, second quarter underway. Jeremy Capinos with a very high punt. They could not be kept inside the 20. It's a touchback. Houston will take over at its own 20. You know, but the great quarterbacks take what's on the practice field of the game. Take a look at him. Fake the ball to Mike Hart, just like you saw on the practice field. He extends the ball. He finishes the fake, immediately gets his eyes downfield. He doesn't care if he's handing it to Edger and James, Joseph Adai, Donald Brown, or Mike Hart. This guy spends countless hours working on the nuances of ball handling, and it's a credit to him. He understands what it means to play a game with the defense. That, that's what he does every single snap. This is Houston's fourth drive. They have three first downs. Went for it on fourth down near midfield a moment ago. Didn't make it, but did not get hurt by the Colts. Shop intercepted. Kelvin Hayden all the way home. Touchdown. They're hitting Matt Schaub a lot, and he's not seeing throws. And Kelvin Hayden, this is why they say he's the best corner on the Indianapolis Colt football team. You're going to see Schaub under duress, and he's going to come looking at the top of the screen for his wide receiver, Mike Walter. But when you don't see throws and you're under pressure, Kelvin Hayden makes you pay. Impact turnover touchdown for the Indianapolis Colts. Well, he, he looked left, John, and he came back right. Could not see that side of the field. There was pressure on him from Clint Session, but late coming back. Adam Vinatieri adds the extra point. One of the few healthy corners from the original starting lineup. Hayden, a pick six. The Colts lead by 14. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Autotrader.com. Now compare new and used cars side by side at Autotrader.com and ESPNShop.com, where you can get all of your official NFL sideline gear. Beautiful day in the Circle City, the state capital of Indiana. You pull back here at downtown, where they are rocking on the edge of downtown here in Lucas Oil Stadium. 14 0 for the Colts. After the pick six, the shot through and Hayden caught. A little gut check time right now for the Houston Texans. Opening there, and Jones got into the traffic. He's down at the 34. Let's go back to the interception, Ron. Well, you'll see Matt Schaub set up in the pocket, and the Colts come with the blitz. 
It's Clint Session coming off the left side. Now you'll see the Texans slide their line. They got three on three, but you'll see Wade Smith just whiff on the block. Shaw feels that pressure and he's late. He looked left and he came back late to the right side. You'll see it right here. Sessions loops back to the inside underneath White Freeney. Gets the shot on Shaw, but Matt is coming from the other side as well. Good pressure by the Colts, who are dialing up the pressure here early in the game. Arian Foster on the ground. First down. Great job to stay in bounds. And into the secondary. Arian Foster with a terrific run. That's what I want to see. I'm sure Gary Kubiak challenged his Houston Texans. They run a weak side stretch play. Justin Tryon misses a tackle. Watch it. Coming off your left side. Tryon's got to come up and make this tackle. And Arian Foster does a nice job on his sideline. That's impressive. That run was 33. He has 65 yards rushing already. Remember, he had 231 in game one. If they keep pounding the ball, he may get there again. He gets a break. Derek Ward comes in. Does a nice job to make it no game. But I think, you know, we've all heard about these Houston Texans. They're 9-7, and seven, their biggest game of their history. The Indianapolis Colts are depleted. They've got a lot of guys out. And I know this is time for the Houston Texans to come into Indianapolis where they've lost eight straight games. They're down by two scores. They go to their Pro Bowl quarterback, Andre Johnson. They're capable of outscoring Indianapolis. As you said, it's a gut check time. Houston needs to get back in this game right now. Job Jones, gain of four. Sports Center right now, Trey Wingo. Michael, thank you. The Vikings have not yet officially waived Randy Moss, but they've released a statement saying they intend to do so. Brad Childress says this decision was made in what we thought was the best interest of the Vikings. And a day after saying Donovan McNabb didn't know the language to run the two-minute offense, Mike Shanahan now saying he didn't have the cardiovascular endurance to do so. Much more on both of these stories at halftime, guys. Oh, we look forward to seeing wow. the Redskins. Their next game will be a Monday nighter against the Eagles. Third and five. Pressure up the middle. Shaw got popped by Clint Session again. Wow. Larry Coyer, the defensive coordinator for the Indianapolis Colts, is dialing up the pressure, and it is getting home. Clint Session has been a monster here in the first half, getting the pressure on Shaw. Well, this is ridiculous. I mean, they don't, they don't block anybody. You'll see Sessions. Session come right up the middle. He's the middle linebacker. There you see him 55, but it's meet at the quarterback. That's Dwight Freeney. That's Mathis, and that's Session right up the middle. There's three guys rocking Matt Schaub. John, that's horrible pass protection. No one touched him right up the middle. The Colts have their punt return team on. The Texans are going for a 53-yard field goal. Indianapolis has to take time out. Colts had their punt return unit on. They never saw that they're going to try to kick a long field goal with Rackers. Schaub has flexed that left arm. He's taken two shots on it from session the last two drives. Back here in Indianapolis, Colts lead 14 to nothing. They've put pressure on Matt Schaub here tonight. Schaub, who's uh, taken a beating in this last drive. Session had the sack, his first full sack of his four-year NFL career. They'll attempt the field goal with Rackers, a 53-yarder. His career long is 55 six seasons ago. Long enough? No, off the upright. Oh, and bounces in. Wow. What a Oof. kick. Well, that was critical, Russ. You're going to give Peyton another short field to work yeah. with. That looked like it was fading, too, there, and running out of steam. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Barely good. And the reason it was so long was because of the sack that was taken by Schaub on the prior play. Well, let's take a look at it. You know, when you become a running back and every down back, you have got to be able to stand in here, see these linebackers moving around, and don't lose sight of your pickup. Take a look at Foster. He's too quick to get out. He doesn't take his responsibility, which is session right up the middle, and that hurts. You know that better than anybody. 
John, Foster we saw it last week. has to do more than right. just run the football. When you're down two scores in the noise on the road, you know you're going to start to see some blitz. So you got to hang in there a little bit longer. That hurt him right there. You know, we saw last week Gronkowski missed his block. Tony Romo's out six to eight weeks. It's not only about running the football for a back. It's about pass protection. And the Dallas fullback was a healthy scratch, inactive last week or yesterday in the Cowboys. And brings this back to the 25. Sherrick McManus. You know what makes the these guys, excuse me, you know what makes these guys special? Watch these defensive ends get off the ball. Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis, it's like a 40 yard dash every time. They get an edge on your tackles. John Tierlink, this defensive line coach, does an exceptional job giving these defensive players clues in how to get an advantage and come off the ball. There's Tierlink right there with his prize pupil, Dwight Freeney. He's coached a lot of great players in this league. Manning begins by handing to Mike Hart, who gets it over the 30-yard line, a five-yard pickup on first down. Jaws, how critical will establishing a run game be for the Colts with their depletion in the receiving core? You know, it, it's never the most important thing for the Colts, but you've got to give the illusion of a run so those defensive linemen and linebackers can just tee off on Peyton Manning. Looks like the right tackle, Ryan Deem, was out of his stance early. False start, offense, number 71. Five-yard penalty remains, second down. And Ryan Deem, the right tackle, is seeing Mark Anderson, the former Chicago Bear, finally active for this Houston Texan team. And Gary Kubiak told us, we know Mario Williams can rush. We've gotten a lot of good downs out of Anthony. Uh, Smith and we need Mark Anderson to come in here and win. He's got one sack already. He just causes a false start on Ryan Dean. Manning's throw to Tammy. Caught by the tight end. It took a big hit. Held on and got the first down across the 35-yard line. We talk about Peyton Manning and when you talk to other players, they talk about He's a computer. He's a robot. He does so many things well. The defensive coordinator, Frank Bush, said he's Michael Jordan. you got to give him his, not what the other guys win. But he's a conductor of the offense. It's like being at a classical music performance. It gets quiet as the conductor gets ready to play. Running with Hart to the right. Dean got a block. Got a flag for it, too. It's run for a first down out to the 48-yard line, but hold the phone here. That one will be coming back. Holding offense number 71. Ten yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, that's why it's really hard to rush Peyton Manning. They have some designer runs. Watch the right tackle set like it's a pass and then he's going to go block Zach Dials the inside linebacker but he holds him. But when Peyton Manning feels like he's getting rushed from these outside edge people he'll call a draw play and they have several draws that are different. That's an old school play. They ran that back in, in, in the day you played. Yeah, I ran that. We had a little lag draw. <laughs> Encroachment, defense number 94. Five yard penalty. It will remain first down. All right, you two are uh, even over there. <laughs> over yeah. on that side. But uh, to come back to the, the noise in here, you know, when the Indianapolis Colts move from Baltimore, this is basketball heaven. Still has such great passion for basketball, but there was a football education that had to go on. And one of the things with Manning doing all this at the line of scrimmage is the quiet at home. It's oh. so quiet in here when they have the ball. Oh, these fans get it. They understand it. It was hard. Always loved this kid. Undersized, small. He has run so hard every time given the opportunity for a yard short of the first down. But uh, he just worked his way through a lot more physically gifted backs at Michigan with some of that 
heart and determination. Well, you see the lateral agility. That's what diminutive guys can do. They don't have to go north and, north and south. They could move east and west and make people miss. Bernard Bollard's got to make that tackle. You're seeing right now the Texans begin to miss tackles. Hart gets the first down, tripped up just shy of midfield. Michelle Tafoya. Well, guys, Robert Mathis, I told you a little bit earlier, had his left knee being looked at. They looked at it for stabilization reasons, and he practiced getting out of his stance, and he seemed to be okay, went back in the game. Right now, though, they've got him in a brace, guys. They they put him in a brace. It's uh, underneath that sock, and, and he'll be playing the rest of the game in that brace, Mike. Okay, Michelle, we'll watch that. That happened early, as you said, with Mathis, who, along with Freeney, gets that speed off the edge. Training room is full enough for the Colts. Through the hands of Gian Robinson, covered by Eugene Wilson, the safety. Eugene Wilson in ex excellent position to break that play up for Gian Robinson. Drove the route. You'll see right here as Peyton delivers. That's what a good secondary player has to do. Once that ball's in the air, drive the route. Don't give any ground. Texan played a little man to man right there. Keep an eye on Brian Cushing. So far, he's done a nice job keeping the Texans lined up. He hasn't taken his eyes off Manning yet. Donald Brown ran into his own offensive lineman, Charlie Johnson. And not much there. It'll be third and ten coming up. Well, there's Brian Cushing. That's the first interior dog that I've seen. You're going to see an inside blitz by Cushing right here. And this is a big middle linebacker. He goes in there, he stuffs a guard, he spins out of there. They do a nice job blocking him, but he opens up a hole for one of his teammates. Cushing missed the first four games. Back in the spring, tested positive elevated level of fertility drug, violated the league's performance enhancing drug policy. This is third game back. Manning out of his hands quick for Garcon, who got hit hard by Wilson, who broke it up, incomplete, and it'll be fourth down. Oh, I love that play right there by Eugene Wilson. Blitz is picked up by Donald Brown, and Manning has time. One-on-one -on -one coverage with help over the top, and Eugene Wilson splatters Pierre Garcon. Watch this safety come in and lower the right shoulder. That's good football good, by Houston. Good, clean football, John. Get that in shoulder to shoulder. Knock the ball out. Capinos had pressure on him. Got rid of it quick. Jones catches at the 14. He's pulled down after a gain of a couple. Aaron Francisco brings him down. You know, Houston's defense hasn't done all that bad. Manning at seven points in a quarter and a half. Freeney back after this. Eleven point lead here in Indianapolis for the Colts, who are trying to win their third straight game, get to five and two. We have the third all-time leading completion percentage guy coming into tonight in league history. And Peyton Manning's also playing in the game. Matt Schaub <laughs> is behind Chad Pennington and Kurt Warner. Obviously, these players from this era when there's been more short passing and that's become so much a part of the game. But it does speak, Jaws, to one significant part of Schaub's game, accuracy. Well, that's where it all starts. You know, everyone talks about, you know, can you be mobile? Do you have a big gun? But you got to throw the football accurate. You look at those top five guys, obviously they throw the ball with velocity as well as accuracy. That's why they're all lumped together there. Tonight, not so accurate. Three of ten. That's because of the pressure. And Andre Johnson got in his hands for the first time and couldn't hold on. Ruled incomplete. Well, Matt Schaub has been under duress all evening long. You'll see it coming from his left side. Dwayne Brown just gets handled by Dwight Freeney. Once again, you get the one-on-one -on -one blocks and Freeney is winning. Not only press from the outside, pressure up the middle. Clint Sessions unblocked. And Matt Schaub is not able to step up into the eye of the storm. He usually gets that edge rush, he could step up. But Sessions now coming up the middle, breaking down the protection schemes. Foster's had a couple of big runs that time. Clint Session continuing his outstanding first half makes the play. Well, Dwight Freeney is really eating Dwayne Brown up right now on this left side. Watch the spin move inside. It creates penetration. Foster has to bounce it outside. And that hesitation allows the Colts to get there. 
I would not be surprised if the Houston Texans look to Rashad Butler, who played left tackle the last four weeks. Remember, Dwayne Brown has been inactive for a while. The Texans need to get Andre Johnson going. Quick out of his hands to Johnson. Got some blocks downfield, but he's tripped up shy of the first time. Was that Session again who made that play? A heck of a play to bring him down, but Session shaken up after Johnson went down right at the first down mark. Session has a sack, four tackles, and then lunging to try to knock down Johnson. I believe he's the one who contacted him. Yeah. Session's been all over the field tonight. Well, he's the tone setter of this team. Remember when they played earlier in the season, Session wasn't 100%, but he's been a wrecking machine tonight. They can ill afford to lose him. Guy had a torn pec muscle last year. We'll check him as we step out. Okay, clean up a few things. Clint Session walked off. He's holding his left hand. The Texans were a couple of chain links short of the first down, choosing to punt here. Blair White back for Matt Turk, who took a bad snap in and hit a great kick. Back of the 16. Blair White returned it to the 34. Nice job by White here, stepping into that role for the first time. See Session grabbing at that right hand. Here's what he did tripping up Johnson. Well, Session has been very active. You'll see right here going low for the ankles. Takes Andre Johnson down and hurt his wrist on that play. I like what Larry Corey, the defensive coordinator, is doing tonight with this Colts defense. Throughout the season, they are not a, not a blitzing team. In fact, they only rushed their four down linemen in passing situations for the most part. In fact, 73% of the time, that's the most in the NFL, just four down linemen. But tonight, they are bringing the heat with their linebackers effectively. Colts begin their fifth drive of the night. Manning tosses to Pierre Garçon, who's tackled by the combination of Cushing and Bryce McCain. Garçon has been bothered by a hamstring, inactive for a couple of games, and slow to kick into gear this year. And that's that play made famous by Marvin Harrison. That little in-breaking route let the defense expand and throw underneath. Manning feels the pressure contacted as he throws incomplete. The former Bear, Adewale Ogunlie, was hanging on a page. Well, Peyton Manning's been sharp when he's had a chance. He's been hit a few times himself. Let's take a look at it. A little play action pass early. How about that throw off your back foot? Then he hits Jacob Tammy on a corner route again off of play action. And down in the red zone, it's Tammy again on a double move. They've looked sharp. They've been disjointed a little bit. You got to give this Texan defense credit. They've only given up one offensive score tonight. This is their fifth drive. They have seven first downs thus far tonight. Manning out of the backfield. It's Hart. Zach Dials trying to stop him. But again, the effort of Hart right at the mark for the first down. Yeah, you, you got Mike Hart at 206 pounds being whacked by Zach Dials at 245. But watch the effort, the finish of the play to get the first down. Picked it up. Mike has to come off to get his shoulder pads readjusted. So Donald Brown comes back in. And here's Brown. We'll lose a couple as Mario Williams comes in to make the play. Well, Mario comes from the backside. And that's Gian Robinson, another tight end. This guy's a very good run player. Watch him just slant to the inside. He beats Robinson with ease. There's another occasion where you miss Dallas Clark. You've got to step with your inside foot and deny inside penetration. Mario Williams says, wait a minute. We had movement first. Don't call it on me. Illegal snap. They may get the center popping that head up. Jeff Saturday is an old Wiley veteran trying to draw the offside. Legal snap. 
Offense number 63. <laughs> Five yard penalty. Remains second down. Come on, don't give me that. Uh, <laughs> they, hey, they are really, yeah. really good at it. You know, they use that tap. They'll have the left guard, you know, tap Jeff Saturday because he's got his head up reading the coverage. And all of a sudden, Jeff will pop his head up. You'll see it right here. See? Oh, there it is. He just picked that ball up a little bit, squeezed a little bit, tried to get a free five yards, but official right on top of it. Jeff said, I didn't move it. Mark oh. got him. Manning. Garcon. Incomplete. Coverage very good. From Bryce McCain as Wilts in the safety came over for the near pick. Well, they've confused Peyton Manning. They got him right there. That ball could have been intercepted. Once again, it's Eugene Wilson, the free safety. This ball's thrown into double coverage, and Eugene sees it early and makes a good break on the ball. That's twice Wilson has been a real factor down the field. They're forcing Peyton to be patient and work underneath in intermediate areas. This one's going to be, well, let's see, we'll let them decide. Neutral zone infraction, defense number 90, stepped into the neutral zone, calls an offensive player to false start. Five yard penalty will remain third down. You just see it at the bottom of the screen, Mario Williams. Trying to get a jump, but giving Peyton a free five yards. Yeah, it's big here, it's now third and 11. And out of the backfield, Donald Brown cannot get there. Cushing with the big hit to stop him shy of the first down. And let's credit Frank Bush, the defensive coordinator, and these Texans. They've done a nice job against the Colts. What are they going to do on fourth down, fourth and short? Well, they're quickly yeah. lining up. You know I got what this it. guy wants to do. I got it. I'll decide if we're going to go or not. They will go. A run with Brown. Brown got it first down. How about that play? The Colts and this quarterback have a play for every situation. They jump the ball in a no huddle situation on fourth and one. They go through a hard count to try to get you to jump off sides. Then they put you to sleep, and he hands the ball off and gets the first down. It's a thing of beauty. And now they keep the tempo up here. And throw to Anthony Gonzalez. Heard from again. Gain of four for Gonzalez. That's just his second catch of the year. He's been inactive the last five after an ankle injury. Suffered against the Texans in game one. Well, you see the tempo being picked up. John, you said it. This is what this offense is about. The Texans are trying to substitute. You get a long drive going. You start to wear that defense down. Peyton right now beginning to feel he's got this Texan defense reeling. Mike Hart back in. He's running well tonight. And Hart to the 30 as we get to the two-minute warning. Mike Hart has 67 rushing yards here in the first half. Some of the other guys stepping up as Manning and the Colts are driving up 11 at the two-minute warning. Tonight's aerial coverage from Indianapolis is brought to you by DirecTV. They'll play the first Big Ten football championship game in here. December 3rd of 11 and a couple of months later they'll play Super Bowl 46. Colts trying to add to their 11 point lead. Garcon with the catch. Bernard Pollard with the tackle. Just shy of the 20 yard line and boy Houston really needs to hold Indianapolis to a field goal on this drive. Boy Peyton is so good in that three step drop you know big guy six foot six 230 pounds just sees over them linemen and drills that quick slant in. Mike Hart flag down his heart's down at the 16 yard line thrown in the interior offensive line. Holding 
Offense number 66. 10 yard penalty. Repeat. Second down. Kyle Devance, the left guard. He and Jamie Richard have gone back and forth at that position. Pierre Garcon shaken up on that play. A, a number of Colts have been banged up here during this game. It's a theme of this Indianapolis season, yet without Dallas Clark, Austin Collie, Joseph Adai. The Colts have controlled the ball on offense in the big play. An interception by Matt Schaub going to Kelvin Hayden for a touchdown. It's the reason Indy's up 14-3 and driving here with 80 seconds to go. And he has time. His slant for Reggie Wayne is broken up by their first round pick at Alabama, Kareem Jackson. And they need Kareem Jackson to play well. This young man's their, not only their first rounder, he's the future for the Texans at right corner. And he read that route. The Colts like to run a lot of underneath routes with Reggie Wayne. Well recognized, good drive by the rookie. Again, huge for Houston to hold the Colts to a field goal because Indy gets the ball to start the second half. Oh man, this has been a clinic on this drive on the snap count. And Houston suckered in. Encroachment, defense number 94. That's just five yard penalty. Long name, third down. Awful discipline by the defensive line of the Texans. Watch the ball. Now you hear that about 10,000 times you go to a practice. Ball key. <laughs> oh, he's got him again. I'd be surprised if he takes a shot here. Slant Wayne on the pick. Reggie to the 11. First down with a buck 11 to go. Well, you Flag said down. pick. You Flag said down. pick, and I think Gonzalez is uh, going to get called. Yep. That's what happens when you miss a lot of practice. But Manning sees man to man coverage. He's going to get after your man to man. Pass interference. Offense number 11. 10 yard penalty. Repeat. Third down. Well, it's a slot formation. It's double bump and run. And watch the receiver number 11, Gonzalez. I've seen a lot worse than that. Oh, so have I. Yeah. Stop short. I would call that good offensive play design. A little rub technique. corner yes. has got to fight through that, but the Texans do get the call. Also backs you out of field goal range uh, for the most part. Vinatieri not as long a leg as he once had. Third and 16. Peyton's throw underneath is caught by Gonzalez. Will get six yards, and that'll make it a 40 seven or 48 yard attempt for Vinatieri if they go for it at the 57 56 second mark Houston takes the time out try to preserve some time for Matt Schaub in the offense and we're going to bring Vinatieri out as we remind you Chris Berman standing by with the Toyota halftime show fastest three minutes with a good performance by Drew Brees in front of all the costumes last night in New Orleans <laughs> The release of Randy Moss with a bizarre turn of events. That is, will the Cowboys make a coaching change? A lot of news all over the league. Mort and Adam Schefter along with Boomer on the Toyota halftime show. Well, Peyton Manning has such great understanding. Hey, he newest third and real long. Let's think three here. Take the six yards. Get Vinatieri in a much more makeable situation. This guy Vinatieri is like a sniper. King of the clutch kickers, two Super Bowl winning field goals. This is a 48 yarder as long this year's 47. Hooking in. And good. Still doing it. Sounds like the voice of experience speaking there. Of course, uh, the tuck rule game is talked about often, but Vinatieri had a clutch field goal in the snow to win that one. Uh, Randy Moss, so let's see, you trade a third round pick for Moss, four games, 14 catches, and now he's released. Very bizarre story. Well, to me, it's pretty simple. Football is the consummate team game. If you don't buy into that, you don't belong on a team. Did he get cut or is he back? I keep hearing conflicting <laughs> well, no, reports. We, we, we've got a release. We're spending no. a lot of time talking about one and six teams and two and five teams we instead are. of teams that are five and two and six and one. The guy's a great player. Something's missing. I'd like to know what it is. 
be interesting to see who picks him up. Waiver wire goes in reverse order of standing. So we'll watch that as that plays out over the next couple of days. You have that story, the story that uh, we talked about with Dallas, and then the bizarre deal in Washington with uh, the comments of Mike Shanahan. Hopefully we have the cardiovascular endurance to make it through the rest of this two-minute drill. I'm going to start working out next week before we get down to Washington. Took it to the 29-yard line, but the guy they brought in this week, Jeremy Kapanos, who's punting, is also kicking off, and his back is bothering him. And this is an area I was always very careful of. At the end of the half, at this place, in a two-minute drive, in my own territory, I didn't want to get careless here because they know there's a good chance we're throwing it, and this is where Freeney and Mathis have caused a lot of fumbles and really ended people's day in this situation. Be careful with these two rushers. Sometimes you see teams run here to get into their two-minute drill. They go empty and throw, and it's incomplete intended for Kevin Walter. And, John, it's interesting that you said that from a head coach's perspective because often fans will see a situation like this. That team will run the ball early, and you go, well, what are you doing? Are you in it or not? Yeah. It's that fear. Yeah, I'm staying away from Freeney and Mathis yeah. so I can regroup at halftime. These two pass rushers, they get trifectas. They hit your quarterback, they get sacks, and they cause fumbles. And Matt Schaub is out of rhythm because of the pressure that he's perceiving. Andre Johnson caught at the 35. They're empty in the timeout column. 35 seconds to go. You know, quarterback has that clock in his head. You know, you know when the pressure's coming. He's been whacked a couple times already. He's starting to feel that pressure. The mechanics begin to break down. Got rid of it. Incomplete. A little miscommunication with Owen Daniels, the tight end, going in opposite directions. And this is a Texan team that is 0 for 6 on third downs here tonight. Now sitting on fourth down with 21 seconds left. Yeah, and if you'd have told me Matt Schaub, Ron, would be 5 for 15 for 37 yards against the team that has none of their secondary people playing tonight yeah. other than Buffet and Kelvin Hayden, everybody else is out. That just goes to show you how important a pass rush is, Mike. And the Colts, they might have the best in football. Well, fortunately for the Texans, they've come back and won a game against Kansas City and Washington with big rallies in the second half. So they have some resources to look back on. Blair White, late call for the fair catch, but gets it at the 18-yard line. Take you back through the game. Arian Foster has had a, a couple of big runs, eight carries, 65 yards, after the big 231-yard game one against Indianapolis. Matt Schaub, though, his second-lowest career completion percentage in a first half. 5 of 15, but he did throw that pick 6 to Kelvin Hayden as part of it. Meantime, Peyton Manning working in some new people around him because of injury. Found Jacob Tammy in the back of the end zone for the lone offensive touchdown for the Colts. And Manning and the Colts will take a knee and take it to the locker room here to end this first half. They get the ball to start. The third quarter, and they're sent off to the cheers of the home folks here in Indianapolis. At the break, Indianapolis 17, Houston 3. Time for Chris Berman now and the Toyota Halftime Show. It's time for Monday Night Football. Peyton Randall dominance is on display. The clock is ticking for the Texans. Will the Colts conquer? or the Texans triumph. Time will tell. The Houston Texans versus the Indianapolis Colts on Monday Night Football. The countdown continues. Winner of this one leads the AFC South. When the night is done and we start November here in Indianapolis with the Colts on top and getting the ball here. 17-3, third quarter. Look inside those windows at Lucas Oil Stadium here in downtown Indy. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Ron Jaworski. So, guys, Arian Foster was pretty good. 65 yards on eight rushes. The rest of the 18 plays for the Texans, 24 net yards. What happened? Not very good. And Dwayne Brown, the left tackle, needs some help. He's struggling with Dwight Freeney. The Texans better leave a tight end there, a back, somebody to help on Dwight Freeney. 0 for 6 on third down. They are not a good first half team. The Texans have been outscored 109 to 50 in the first half. Opening possession here in the third quarter is going to be big. Somebody has to make a play for Houston, but they can't block the Colts right now. Because really, when you think about it, their defense didn't do all that bad a job limiting the Colts to 10 points in the first half. A pick six, Gary Kubiak's quarterback, 
thrown one to Kelvin Hayden who took it back the other way and Schaub was pressured in that first half as well. Here are those numbers John mentioned the 0 for on third down trying to sustain and extend drives they were 0 for 6 and that leads that number at the bottom there 11 minutes and 12 seconds time of possession you never want to give the ball to Peyton Manning for almost two thirds of a quarter and after a slow start he and the Colts picked it up with 165 yards of offense. That's how we've arrived at 17 three and Neil Rackers replaced Chris Brown it's a line drive that Eric Foster the lineman who plays some fullback fielded neatly on a hop and is brought near the 30 yard line to get this third quarter underway. Well Jacob Tammy big touchdown pass in that first half you'll see him a tight end position right there little stick nod go sticks to the outside nods to the outside boy both linebackers fight this are a linebacker and Bernard Pollard he replaces Dallas Clark Clark made this route famous Tammy must have been watching outstanding job by Manning and Tammy for the Colts touchdown yeah that's such a big deal coming in Dallas Clark terrific inside the 10 catching touchdowns in that tight area 21 over the last three years Mike fake to Mike Hart Manning was hit as he threw and that pass is incomplete Antonio Smith had pressure and Zach Dials almost went up and got an interception well they like Antonio Smith he can play defensive end or defensive tackle he creates plays for these other Texans and that's a nice job by the Houston Texan front four who also has been a hard cast to block for these Indianapolis Colts. That rarely happens. Mm -hmm. Reggie Wayne makes a living at the left yep. side. He runs a simple slant, slant route. Ball thrown perfectly. Would have been a first down. Well, you're almost speechless when Reggie Wayne yeah. drops the ball. Well, these Colts have been spoiled. They've had Reggie Wayne. I don't know how many starts he's had consecutively. And he never misses practice. This guy is a fierce competitor on the practice field. That's how Marvin Harrison trained him to be. Problem is, Garcon and Gonzalez have been hurt a lot. And missed a lot of practice. It's third and long. The twist up front brings pressure on Manning, who got rid of it for the first down to Garcon at the 49 yard line. You talk about pocket awareness, feeling the pressure, moving them from the pressure. We always talk about pocket mobility. You'll see Mario Williams coming off the left, left side of Peyton Manning. Boy, now he steps up, moves. Up into that eye of the storm because the pressure is going to come from the outside. Go where it's calm in the middle of that pocket. Gain of 18. Manning checking down a heart. The turf monster got him at the 45, but he was untouched. So he's right at the first down mark. That's again just great pocket presence by Manning looking downfield. Awkward delivery. Awkward delivery to Mike Hart. Another first down. 10 touches and 86 yards for Hart here tonight. Part four yard. You know, you talk about, and we listen to Peyton Manning and how he orchestrates, and immediately you think it's the pass game, but the run game, he gets his running backs into so many good looks with the things he sees at the line of scrimmage. He runs the football into optimum looks. You rarely see the Indianapolis Colts waste the play. Every play is a research project for Peyton Manning. Sometimes it takes him three seconds, sometimes 26 seconds, but he gets the answers. Up second and nine, here comes Garcon cutting back in. Tammy threw a block. Garcon, he's got a couple of blocks on this side and then room to run. To the 26 yard line first down well Peyton Manning at the line of scrimmage 
saw the blitz. He went with a dummy snap count. He audibled when he saw the blitz of the quick screen to his right. And after he got the ball in the hands of Pierre Garcon, it was all Pierre Garcon. That's bad tackling by the Houston Texans. And Frank Bush told us, look at Peyton Manning getting the block. <laughs> the defensive coordinator, Frank Bush, told us tackling's a problem. You can only have so many pursuit drills, tackling drills. You got to make the tackles. Tammy releasing off the line, the tight end with another first down. And surgically, they're cutting up the Texans on this drive. These replacement players, I call them Tammy, on a little looky, read it as a hot throw, and Manny hit him in stride. But Tammy looks comfortable, Jaws. He looks like he's been playing tight end for years. Well, it was hot. He read it. Zach Dials came on the blitz. Peyton saw it. Tammy saw it. First down. Garcon almost able to get it. That throw was behind him. You guys are talking about Jacob Tammy, who's trying to fill some of that Dallas Clark role. He only had six career catches in his first couple of years. They took him in the fourth round of the OA draft out of Kentucky and was more like a wide receiver than a tight end. The reason he stuck around and made the team was he played special teams, played special teams very well. One of the top tacklers on teams last few years. And now ready to step into this role. Watch out for Garcon down here. Manning incomplete as he was looking for Tammy. You know, when we asked Peyton about all the things he does at the line of scrimmage, I, I found the most interesting he said was, when I'm looking at the defense, I, I want to eliminate a lot of things that I know they can't do. And here he'll go quick on third and ten. Blitz comes. Wayne got a block from Gonzalez. Got a touchdown. This guy's amazing. Well, he read the blitz once again. The Texans could not disguise it. He got to an optimum look. There's quick screen out to the left. Offensive lineman down in front. And Reggie Wayne walks into the end zone. This is how you run an offense. You see the blitz. You get it out in front. And you see number 66, Kyle Devane, out in front. Didn't even have to block anybody. There was such a beautiful scene for Reggie Wayne to get to the end zone. That drive was all on Peyton Manning running this offense into good looks. That's a football worth hanging on to for Reggie Wayne. 64th touchdown. Peyton Manning is throwing him. Vinatieri adds the extra point. They pass Unitas and Berry on the all-time TD connection list. Eyeing him down. 87, I see that. For the 64th time, I'll throw him a touchdown. We're cranking along here, Indianapolis on top, 24 to three. The uh, supporting cast has changed, except for the guy sitting on the top of the bench there, Reggie Wayne. On the back end of that Peyton Manning touchdown. The return by Jacoby Jones, who got a good block here on the edge. Take it to the 40. Monte Leach is fullback with a nice job. Well, we mentioned the jump ahead on the all time passing touchdown list. Past Colts legends Johnny Unitas and Raymond Berry. These guys combined for 63 touchdowns, number five on the all time list. Doing it from the mid 50s, Jaws to the late 60s. Yeah, did you see that play faking by Johnny Unitas, coach? It looked like Peyton Manning with that, fulfilling the fake. Two Hall of Famers yeah. there. They are now sixth on the list as Manning and Wayne move up on Colts history and league history. Of course, Marvin Harrison and Peyton Manning atop that list here with this franchise. Marion Foster with his carry on first down. This is the first drive of the third quarter for the Texans. Well, you just wonder how long they can be patient with their offense. Not time to panic yet at 24-3 Indy. But sooner or later, they're going to have to open this up. But they have had all kinds of problems blocking the defensive line and concession on the blitz. They got to get that running game established a little bit, but they got to start getting some chunks of yards. Foster left. Nice cut by Arian. Pat Angler tackles him a yard shy of the first down. 
And we welcome those of you who watched the San Francisco Giants win the World Series. First time in 56 years for the franchise. Here are the Houston Texans. They kind of look like the Texas Rangers right now. They're struggling mightily. Texans and Colts tied here in the AFC South. The winners in first place. The Texans won the first head-to-head -head in week one, but Peyton Manning missing some of his very key players like Dallas Clark and Austin Collie and Joseph Adai. They put up 17 on offense. They have a pick six for the other score. Matt Schaub and this uh, Houston offense have struggled here trying to pick up their first third down conversion of the night. And as they spot it and look at it, and Tony Carrente decides if he's going to measure or not. And as he brings out the change, we bring in Michelle Tafoya. Well, Mike, I spoke with Gary Kubiak after halftime. He is clearly frustrated, maybe not panicking, but very frustrated with their lack of pass protection. He said, we are struggling big time, making mental mistakes we don't normally make. He said, we've tried max protection. We've tried, tried regular protection. We've got to just keep plugging away. So he is clearly frustrated, but some of his players were coming out of the locker room, Mike, saying, we've come from behind before. Let's do it tonight. Michelle, they have rallying from down 10 at Washington and Kansas City. And John and Josh, where can they find something to click here? and get moving down by 21. Well, what they've done all season long is they've had offensive balance. They've got to stay with this running game, but the four or five-yard plays are not going to get it done. Eventually, they're going to need some explosive plays to get back in this game. You better get Dwight Freedy and Mathis blocked, <laughs> or you'll be lucky to get five yards against this defense the way they're on it. And this is right up their alley, 21-point lead at home. Job, looking for space to throw and he finds Foster complete and Arian Foster got hit hard and high by Aaron Francisco but a first down to 35 gain of 14. Well again this is Dwight Freeney on a bull rush and he walks the tackle right back into the backfields nice job anchoring down by Dwayne Brown right here and Shab gets it off lays it off to a very talented back this Arian Foster is a lot better receiver than people think he can do it all. Toss to Derek Ward, giving Foster a break. And Swamp the Bay comes over to make the tackle. Boy, that's a bunch crunch right there. They bring the tight end in short motion. They toss the ball on the perimeter. And Vontae Leach, this fullback, number 44, I say send Vontae Leach to the beach. That's the Pro Bowl. <laughs> Does an excellent job in his two-back running game. And right now, Gary Kubiak is putting the tight end outside of the wide receiver to get Schaub some pre-snap information. Going a quick count here, and they run up the middle with Foster a couple of yards shy of the first. I know you and Jaws like to watch the last four games of a team coming in. Leach is that good? We're going to send him up to the Pro Bowl in Hawaii? I believe he is. He's okay. very underrated. This guy's done it for a long time. And when you watch these films carefully, I've seen linebackers cringe in the hole when he goes after you. Heck of a player and a pretty good receiver. John, I couldn't agree with you more. You go back to that first game, you saw those coach linebackers turning their shoulder, turning their body, not taking on the blocks of Leach. He's tough coming on that backfield, leading any of those running backs for the Texans. Third and three, helps in protection. The shot for Andre Johnson. Inside, yes, touchdown, Houston. A 28-yard score, the third of the year for the four-time Pro Bowler Johnson. Well, the Texans finally took a shot. They've been throwing all these check downs and short crosses. Now you take a shot down the field. You have Andre Johnson. You've got to get the ball in his hands. You see a nice stutter move on Kelvin Hayden, and you can see the strength of Johnson just moves him off to the side, creates some space, and I love the throw out in the box, away from the defender, away from the safety, put in a position where only your receiver could make the catch. Out of the hole of Matt Turk, Neil Rackers makes it 24 to 10. A Schaub gets on the board with a touchdown pass. Much needed. And what a good job of body control and strength by Andre Johnson. Texans are heard from. Andre Johnson has been battling a right ankle sprain throughout this season and still has a brace was going to wear that brace another couple of games limping around on that Houston sideline after the touchdown to get him back a little seam there and he got hit at the 30 by Vontae Leach that'll get him to the beach too right <laughs> Mr. I'm Pro Bowl. 
All right, Sheriff's back in town. See what Peyton Manning does halfway through the third when you come back. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by GMC. Check out the GMC Never Say Never moment of the week at NFL.com slash GMC and NFLshop.com where you can customize apparel the way you want it. Kissing the yard of bricks. Dale Jarrett did it after the Brickyard 496. Of course, the Indianapolis 500 held at the Speedway about six and a half miles northwest of here. Here's the other driver in town. Peyton throws to Jacob Tammy going in for Dallas Clark a gain of 10. You know, we get to go to practice every Saturday and watch the home team practice. And it's really their normal Friday practice before Sunday. Last full one of the week. We got a chance to watch the Colts and Peyton Manning at work a couple of days ago. And uh, we get to do it every week. John and Jaws have done it for decades in their life. And uh, Saturday is just a unique treat as Donald Brown carries for the first down. John, it's the first time you got a chance to see Peyton Manning in a full practice. Yeah, and I know Tom Moore well. I know Peyton Manning well. But what I saw was unbelievable. He had a script in his pocket. He called every play. He ran the whole practice. And while they were practicing, other people were sitting quietly. Until he's done getting his work done, the Colts keep practicing. But what I saw was 13 years of hard work and a coaching staff that's really turned him loose and given him the authority to do what he does. False start, offense, number 71. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. You know, it really was extraordinary. You know, I've been doing this job for four years. We do go to different teams' practices. I go to training camps and visit a lot of teams. I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen a quarterback in control of his entire football team for the periods that Peyton Manning runs. Manning dancing, looking for Gonzalez down the seam. What a catch. At the 26, <laughs> gain of 35. Well, just the total awareness of what the defense is doing. He knew he had the middle open, but there was pressure. You'll see Manning, he's going to feel the heat. There's some pressure. He's going to have to move a little bit this right to get away from Mario Williams. But he knows he has the single coverage with Anthony Gonzalez on Glover Quinn. Marshall 27 got him but overshoots Reggie Wayne by a pace you know Peyton Manning when he sees man-to-man -man coverage or a blitz he doesn't just try to throw a slant he goes after your throat he goes deep he takes shot plays at you and that's why a lot of people fear him look at the release by Reggie Wayne that's one Peyton regrets that he missed but this guy Manning his preparation so intense and when he sees man-to-man -man, He's going after you. He's salivating. He won't, he won't sleep for a week after missing that one. Manning a slant. Garcon hangs on a yard shy of the first down. And you guys talked about those periods of practice where Peyton's looking at things. I thought what he said was interesting. He said, pre-snap, I want to eliminate. Let's say it's 10 things out there. I want to eliminate seven so I know that when I drop back and get the ball it's gonna be one of three things thus I can react to it so he tries to get those looks in practice that period you guys were talking about to help hit optimum looks at the optimum time like right here okay this man to man he sees it Gonzalez went the other way. Marker is down as Reggie Wayne was trying to get free. We'll check the whistle in the secondary. Mike, as we're talking about Peyton, the one thing I found very unique, he starts short to long. He reads the defensive line at the line of scrimmage, then the linebackers, then the secondary. There are two fouls on the play, both against the defense. Holding, defense number 25, this penalty is declined. Holding, defense number 29, this is a five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Both corners are holding. That's why nobody was open. <laughs> you know, the one player we've hardly mentioned tonight, Mario Williams. You give Manning this kind of time in the pocket, 
He's going to slice you up, and right now, that's what he's doing. It's up to this Texans defensive line, and they've been solid this season, but tonight, they've had very little pressure consistently on Peyton Manning. One tackle for the 06 number one overall pick. Ninety-eight's number one overall pick for Garcon. Fans want the flag, don't get it. Well, I think Peyton expected the route by Garcon to get to the outside. Pierre went back to the inside after Peyton had thrown it out in the box. You'll see it right here. Here's the release. Now he takes it to the outside. He fooled Peyton. Peyton thought he was going to stay on the outside, but he came back underneath. That's dumping on the quarterback. Can't do that. Draws it with Donald Brown. Right now, the Colts are missing Brody Eldridge, mm -hmm. another tight yes. end. And this whole second half, they've been in their 11 personnel. That is one back and one tight end. They've been going with this three receiver set. And so far, the stamina of Anthony Gonzalez is good. He's made a big play down the field. And in these third down and goal situations, they love to throw middle screens. Garcon's got it. it. Looks like he's got a first down at the two. First and in goal, Indianapolis. Peyton Manning knows where everyone is on the field. He looked down the middle. He looked for Donald Brown on that check down John was talking about. Nothing opened up from looks downfield. Now watch the eyes. They take you right to the receiver. There's Pierre Garcon waiting for the football. Peyton Manning finds a hole, finds a void in the defense. Garcon, 14 catches all year. Six more tonight. This is the 23rd red zone entry against the Texans. They've given up 18 touchdowns so far this year in the red zone. Bryce McCain covering Reggie Wayne. This is what happens when you don't have tight ends. Jaws, you know that. Yep. You can't get your muscle group on the field and slam it in there from the two yard line. And right now, Indianapolis is trying to throw the ball more than most teams would even think about in these tight red zone areas. But they're also very effective with their inside traps in this area of the field. We saw Dallas Clark there. You mentioned Brody Eldridge, the rookie. We saw him walk off in the second quarter and head back to the locker room. There's inside Donald Brown. Gets one to the one. Dallas Clark's red zone production we talked about it at the half extraordinary more than any other guy inside the 10 since 2007 he's been the pickup six guy get the touchdowns inside the 10 there and right behind him is Reggie Wayne who has 12 of them inside the 10 over the last three years what a combination leading by 14. You can start 199, looking for win 136. Peyton Manning, he and the Colts leading the Texans by 14. And they still have three receivers. They just don't have any blocking tight ends left. They have to stay in these spread formations. Tammy's in the game, the tight end in the fullback position right now with Mike Hart in the backfield. Inside run, Mike Hart fighting for it. Keeps rolling on top of bodies that may get him the score. Let's see if they're going to mark him down short. No, they'll mark him short. So what will the Colts do on fourth and inches? They're going to send out their kicker, I believe. 
Send out Vinatieri to make it a 17 point game. They will. And this lack of a blocking tight end, this lack of a short yardage, goal line, four minute run the clock out offense is something that has to concern Jim Caldwell right now. Losing Brody Eldridge is a big loss. You see, he, he never got a body part down, and that Caldwell is looking at the big screen here, but he never crossed the plane as Houston came in and did a nice job filling in. So Indy denied on those tries, and uh, the play clock ran all the way down, but that won't impact anything here in terms of distance for Vinatieri. Absolutely the right call. You know, you get in these situations, sometimes the, the crowd gets screaming and hollering. They affect the coach's decision. You know, it's a two-score game right now at 24-10. Make it a three-score game. Take your points when they're available. Oh, officially 23 yards. Terry knocks it through, and it's 27-10 Indianapolis. The buck 18 to go in the third. Our aerial coverage from the state capital of Indiana is brought to you by DirecTV. It's also the home of the NCAA as well. Final four played in here last year. I still think Gordon Hayward's shot from Butler is going to go in. What a moment that was in this building. Jacoby Jones trying to get to the edge. Good job to chase him on down by Mike Newton, shy of the 25 well in the old building the rca dome a lot of great moments under the tutelage and head coaching leadership of tony dungy all right Phil honored at halftime by owner Please jim ursay phil poley and the president the ring of honor and welcome our newest member coach tony dungy inducted into the ring of honor and many of the fans here stayed in their seats actually stood in front of them to give tony a standing ovation as he was inducted in honor of that great run with the Colts, including the Super Bowl championship, Super Bowl 44. There you see Tony watching the game. Had a chance to uh, see Tony at lunch today. And uh, is really proud of that honor, as Indianapolis is of his time here. Yeah, I had a chance to play, to play against Tony in Kansas City. He was an assistant coach when I was a player. And just a classy guy and a real passion for the game of football and the game of life. Well deserved. One of the best. Here's Schaub trying to bring him back. Foster on the screen. Love the way this guy runs with the ball. Good tackle by Kelvin Hayden. Just shy of the first down. That's one way to slow the pass rush down. You send Foster right at Freeney and you bluff him. And you turn around and you throw a middle screen and take off running. Good play selection by Gary Kubiak. He and Schaub have been together now for four years. And they're as good a battery as there is in football. Coach Gary Kubiak, who's a lot more active now, calling plays. Remember, former coordinator Kyle Shanahan is gone. He's out in Washington. A double Freeney that time, and Monte Leach, the fullback, takes it to the 30 in the first down. They're doing a great job putting Owen Daniels, their tight end, outside a wide receiver. They scored the last time. Owen Daniels lines up outside the tight end, and you see Bethea, who's a safety, number 41, covering him. Well, Schaub knows it's man-to-man -man coverage, and his best matchup is up top, where Andre Johnson, his great receiver, has one-on-one -on -one coverage. Schaub drops right back to pass, looks off the free safety, touchdown. But this pre-snap information he's getting from the formation is helping him, and it's working again in this drive. Nice little adjustment to what they were doing offensively. That run by Foster was stopped, but by a face mask flag. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask, defense number 92. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Which will take the Texans to the 46 or 47-yard line as the quarter comes to an end. Going to mark it off first. Peyton Manning always working on the sideline. The Clyde Christian over there, the offensive coordinator, studying those photos. Houston now at the 47. Yep. Houston has op opted to extend the quarter by one play because of the defensive foul. First down. And you have that option, so it makes sense, obviously. Down 17, give me one more snap. Yeah, but the penalties on their first round draft choice, Jerry Hughes from TCU. 
That's a terrible penalty there. They've not got anything out of Jerry Hughes this year. Been somewhat of a disappointment. They're hoping he can learn from Freeney and Mathis. Got to relearn that. You don't want those kind of fouls. Guy with 26 and a half sacks in a couple of years at TCU. Inactive half of the first six games. So the final play of the third because of the flag. And Schaub. Nothing open deep, got out of the tackle box, got rid of it incomplete. Robert Mathis had the pressure. We send you off to the fourth quarter. For the lead in the AFC South after three at Lucas Oil Stadium, Indianapolis by 17. Off we go to the fourth quarter here in Indy. Mike Tirico, Ron Jaworski, John Gruden, Michelle Tafoy on the sideline. Indianapolis. Trying to split the season series with Houston, which won game one at home by 10. They trail by 17 in the rematch. Matt Schaub had a pocket as Andre Johnson gets to the 39 yard line. Let's point out again the cornerbacks, Gerard Powers and Jacob Lacey, will be the second and third best corners available to the Colts tonight, both down because of foot injuries. So Tryon has uh, been forced into a lot of action here tonight. And he's been pretty solid, but he's been the beneficiary of a very good pass rush. You know, pass defense is about coverage and rush. And certainly this Colts front four is getting pressure. The 39, Schaub, a slant for Kevin Walter. Incomplete, pulled down early. He said something nice about Tryon. Now a flag. Pass interference, defense number 20. Automatic, first down. Well, the quarterbacks have been working here tonight with uh, the idea of a big offensive shootout in mind. Indy's defense has played better than we thought they would. And Matt Schaub is just 10 of 21, under 50% completion. For the guy's third all-time in completion percentage in the NFL. Meantime, Manning, 21 of 36, with many of his key personnel out because of injury. Schaub looking downfield for Johnson. Andre got it in the red zone where Houston is the best in the league. First down. Boy, they love this play. Matt Schaub, a full fake, and they let Andre Johnson have a vertical read. He's going to attack that safety, and if the safety's deep, Andre will sit down. Watch Schaub come right out of this fake. Andre sees the top half of the coverage. He sits down, and Schaub threw him to an open area. That's two guys that have played a lot of good football together. Andre Johnson and Matt Schaap. Boy, that big fella at 6'3 can go up and snag it out of the air. First time in the red zone for the Texans. In the 18, Schaub covered. Getting out of the way. Throws to Jacoby Jones. Lost the football to Arian Foster. Very lucky to do that. Foster out of bounds at the 16-yard line. I told you Houston is good in the red zone. They've scored every time in. 12 touchdowns. That's the best percentage in the league. And five field goals. Why is this team, Ron, good in the red zone? Well, balance. They run the football as well. You know, right now they're in a passing game. But, you know, historically this season with Arian Foster, they've been able to balance out the defense, have to respect the running game. Bring that eighth defender down in the box. You're going to get isolation routes on the outside. A run down here with Foster. Cut it up. Good. Tough run as he gets to the six. Gary Brackett the tackle. First and goal, Houston. Well, that helps your red zone. When you can slam the ball at people against these zone coverages, watch Arian Foster come right off tackle, press it, and accelerate. The Indianapolis Colts have been playing their best three linebackers. They've inserted Pat Anger, their second round draft choice on the weak side, Sessions and Brackett. And they're still having a hard time stopping this power running game of Arian Foster. See the receivers tight to the tackles there. Walter comes in motion. Bootleg Schaub, nothing open. Walter incomplete. Colts ready for that uh, staple of a look from the Houston offense. Well, it was like the Colts were in the huddle. I mean, they played with tremendous discipline, almost like they expected the bootleg. You'll see Schaub as he gets outside the pocket, and he's been very good outside the pocket throughout his career. But right there, the Colts defense was well aware of what they were trying to do. Down this area, you have to play with great discipline. This is where Schaub will call two plays in the huddle. He'll have a run play, and he'll kill it with a pass or vice versa.
Foster got it. Touchdown, Houston. They're alive. This Arian Foster is tough. He's powerful, good vision for a running back. You know, when they have these zone plays, you got to have that vision. He's got that quick one step break. Yeah, but Aaron Francisco, Jaws, not to interrupt you, he's got to step up and make this tackle. He was victimized on the touchdown earlier. To Andre Johnson, you got to step up and make that tackle. Well, you talk about all the Colts injuries. Bob Sanders out for a long time, not on IR for the season. Melvin Bullitt, who did so well in Standerstead, out for the rest of the season on IR. Francisco was cut by this team and came back. He was here last year. Extra point added by Neil Rackers. And now it's on Houston's defense. Can they stop the Sheriff? It's a 10-point game. And Arian Foster taking it home. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by the Miller Lite Vortex Bottle. Taste greatness. And Autotrader.com. Now compare new and used cars side by side at Autotrader.com. To that Soldiers and Sailors Monument, that circle downtown, the hub of Indianapolis, been here for over a century. Well, can Houston do it again? They did it in Washington and against Kansas City, rallying from down 10 in the fourth quarter to win games. They've come back from down 17. And we've heard over the years, once you've done it, you have the confidence and the belief. Well, you're not going up against Peyton Manning all the time in those situations. Defense has to help. Justin Tryon from three yards deep. Stopped at the 23 with Troy Nolan. And the tight end, James Casey, on the tackle. I think this is the time of game where the Texans really step up on defense, Mike. Let's see if Mario Williams has heard from. Just one tackle tonight. Plays first NFL game as a middle linebacker. Last year's defensive rookie of the year in the AFC, Brian Cushing. See if he and the Texans defense can come up with a stop. Colts take over at the 23. Reggie Wayne a slant. For nine yards. I don't know how you blitz Manning. He sees Glover Quinn come right off the edge, and the ball's gone almost before he accepts the snap. Just a great read of the blitz by Reggie Wayne and Manning. That's how you draw it up. No huddle run. Mike Hart, another first down. What a good game Mike Hart is having here for the Colts. He's over 70 yards rushing, three receptions for 19 yards. And it's time for the Texan defense to step up, Jaws. They've got enough good players. Antonio Smith, a prize free agent. Mario Williams, Amobia Koye is a high draft choice. You have Cushing in the middle. They need to get a stop right now. Space away from Mario. Did Gonzalez catch that? Rule the catch at the 43 yard line. And Peyton took a shot yep. from Mario Williams. He got up slowly. Let's see if he caught this. No, no. He did not challenge. Flag thrown by Gary Kubiak. Well, that's the other problem you have when you got this uh, up tempo speed mm -hmm. offense. Houston is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed pass. Which was part of the Colts' frustration of the umpire moving to that other spot back behind the offense. He has to get in, spot it, and get back out. <laughs> they thought it would take longer and might not allow them to beat the challenge. They're going to get one here. Houston will win this one. All right, Tony Correnti has the result of what we believe will be a challenge won by the Texans. After reviewing the play, the pass had hit the ground. Therefore, it is an incomplete pass. It will be second down, 10 yards to gain at the 37-yard line. With the game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 11.08. 11.08. Thank you. And Houston's not charged Houston. a timeout. And they can challenge again. Now, I want you to watch this on this. Mario Williams rushed it. Jaws and John were pointing out, pushing the lineman back. Johnson, watch it. He hits Peyton, and Peyton took a shot there, and he got hit. 
Usually he gets up to the line quick in these situations to try to beat a replay. I want you to watch Mike Hart, very heady player, saw this and tells Peyton, hey, I know you get yourself back together. Hurry up. Let's get back to the line to get the playoff before a challenge. He was slow getting up because of the pain. Couldn't. And Houston won the challenge. Man in time. Down the middle. Caught. Garcon first down in Houston territory at the 49. You, you know, when you get hit like that, and you have the poise to come back and stand in the pocket and throw a strike to Pierre Garcon. I mean, a great pickup on the blitz, but... That's what you call major league throw. Yeah, you saw Dials come up the middle along with pushing that double A gap blitz beautifully picked up by the Colts offensive line. And boy, Peyton just hangs in the pocket, delivers the strike. We'll look over here to Reggie Wayne. It'll be a run with Hart. Good cutback by Mike Hart. First down of a 36-yard line. That's a nice job right there. The Colts, you see Peyton sees Zach Dials on the tight end in a choke position, has a feeling he's going to blitz, audibles to a weak side run, and they have the advantage. But when you see Pollard stacking Dials, you have a feeling it could be a rotation man-to-man -man blitz. That's, again, good play selection. Nice run by Mike Hart. Mike Hart, who in his career had 172 rushing yards coming into tonight, 93 of them coming this year, is getting close to a 100-yard rushing game here. Come on! Manning to Gonzalez, who's wide open. Out of bounds, first down, 25-yard line. They wanted a flag on Pollard for a hit on the paint over there. Did not get one. This is absolutely surgical by Peyton Manning. Which the fans are complaining about. I guess. Well, the contact is made just about as going out of bounds, but certainly drove him into the ground. But Peyton Manning is just finding the weakness of this defense on every single play, the passing game and the running game. I said. This is something to watch. This guy is in control right now. Gonzalez needs a break, so Blair White, the rookie free agent out of Michigan State, is the slot receiver. That's the fourth straight blitz by the Houston Texans. Their back is against the wall. Frank Bush, the defensive coordinator. There you see Bill Kohler, the defensive line coach. Mario Williams on the sidelines. And Mike Hart just got shaken up, injured his left ankle, and Donald Brown hasn't been in for a while, so Javaris James... The cousin of Edger and James, undrafted rookie free agent. So Adai's hurt, Brown's down. They give Hart a cheer as he comes off. He injured his ankle there. Had ankle problems throughout his Michigan career. Oh, oh. Got that left one bent under there. So Javaris James, rookie free agent. Edgerin ran pretty well here for a while. Now Javaris James up the middle. Got tripped up. As the 18-yard line. Edron had over 10,000 yards in his career. Javaris at Miami had 2,100 yards in his career, 18 touchdowns. How about this, though? You got to find your mouthpiece, find your helmet, put it on, and get out on the field. The first player in there, Peyton Audibles, <laughs> to a weak side zone, and it's crunch time. Here, third down and three. James has to be ready now to yeah. pick up a blitz. Yeah, look like Peyton was telling him what to do. <laughs> yep. You've got a graduate level professor oh, with a bunch man. of sophomores out here right now. Incomplete. Gonzalez stopped Jackson over there on coverage. And a field goal attempt to make it a 13 point game. One of the few times you'll see Peyton Manning and one of his wide receivers not see the field through the same eyes. Gonzalez pulled up. Peyton thought he would run through. Consequently, an incomplete throw. Adam Vinatieri's made two. He has 350 on his career. Hip and knee problems in recent years have affected his distance in kicking. This one's 36. Watch out for Mario Williams right up the middle. Vinatieri got it off and got it through. And Williams frustrated as he got through there and almost, John, got close to the block. 
The frustration was of Peyton not picking up a third down, limiting his team to a field goal and keeping the Texans within two scores. What's up, Stuart Scott with you on Sports Center after the game, the GMC postgame report. Highlights, analysis, and a guest with us on the field. 56 years later, the Giants win the World Series again, and the latest on Randy Moss. And Coach Gruden, you were a share for Halloween. The rest of us just want to be this guy. <laughs> All right, Stuart, thank you. <laughs> Glad Stuart was watching. Yes, see postgame. This match to wonderful. First Monday Night Football game played here. This is Monday Night Football game number 635, and this is the 60th different stadium to host Monday Night Football. Jeremy Capados with the kickoff. See if the Texans get a special teams play to give them a good field start. Jacoby Jones tackled. Came across the 20. Taiwan Hagler got him. A lot of college football coming your way Saturday on ABC or ESPN. You check your local listings. Some of the main games, Oregon still rolling. Number one there taking on Washington. And Northwestern Penn State has history. Joe Paterno goes for win 400. Some of you also get Nebraska-Iowa State, North Carolina, and FSU. Saturday afternoon on ABC or ESPN2 as we start working towards the Bowl Championship Series seasonally this year here on ESPN. Schaub takes over from the 29. Off the hands of the linebacker session and incomplete. And John, this is the time of the game that the Colts are built for. Manning builds up a lead, and now they go to their Mariano Rivera, if you will. I call it closing time for Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis. You just saw the Texans put two tight ends off the ball in position to chip these two guys. Freeney has forced 38 fumbles. Mathis has forced 36. High condition, high football character, and they love closing time at home. Well, you see the tight formation. Now you're not going to give him that short corner. Schaub got rid of it. Foster, a one-handed grab, and Foster out to the 31. Here's Sports Center right now with Trey Wingo. Michael, thank you. The World Series is over, and for the first time ever, the San Francisco Giants are World Series champs. Edgar Renteria, your World Series MVP, a three-run homer here off Cliff Lee. And then in the ninth, the man who's done it all year long for the Giants, Brian Wilson, comes in to get the strikeout to win it. First championship for the Giants franchise since 1954. Complete highlights and analysis on SportsCenter. Back to Indy. Thanks, Trey. Third and long. And this crowd's now into it. Watch this get off. Job only has Foster as an option. Loss of a couple of yards. Kelvin Hayden leading the tackle charge for the Colts. I mean, when you can get this kind of pressure with a four-man rush, watch the get off. And Dwight Freeney has given Brown fits all yes. night. And the same with Mathis, but they're playing a lot of zone coverage. Schaub has to get rid of the ball before he wants to. No patterns can develop. These defensive ends, I'm glad I'm not coaching. They drive me crazy. But you watch Matt Schaub in the pocket. He is perceiving that pressure. He's moving before the pressure is even there. If his number one target is not open, he's in trouble. <laughs> I know you'd perceive pressure, too. That's easy for you yeah. to say. Matt Turks kicked 51 yards from the 20. Blair White. 7 to the 27, second straight special teams tackle, James Casey. Five and a half to go. So uh, Peyton Manning's, well, essentially, this has been his uh, twice a year paying off annuity, playing the Houston Texans. It's just filled up his stat deposit quite well. 433 yards a season high in game one. Here, fewer passes, fewer yards, two touchdowns. So uh, some quick addy there. He's just 692 yards. It's a good couple of games against a division foe who knows you and sees you every year. Mike, this may be the best, though. I mean, this has been extraordinary what he's been able to do tonight. I mean, when you look at the depleted offensive weapons he has out there with him, and to, to have the kind of performance he's had, to me, is just remarkable. And he's going to hand the ball off here to a back who hasn't carried the ball in the National Football League. Yeah, Javaris James, this is second NFL carry. The first one was on the last drive. He runs forward here for a couple of yards and it's a credit to Manning but the same can be said for Tom Brady up in New England mm -hmm. they've lost a lot of players I see Danny Woodhead Bed Jarvis Green Ellis rookie tight ends 
if you have a great quarterback, and I'm not saying a great hamburger or a great hotel, I'm saying a great quarterback, Ron, <laughs> they can cover for a lot of things. And Tom Brady and Peyton Manning look like they're on a collision course again this year in the AFC. Reggie Wayne, the catch, moves forward for about three yards. We have a timeout taken by Houston here with five minutes left trying to preserve as much time as possible. What about a great hamburger at a great hotel? Yeah. That's so that'd be better like than a great that. quarterback? You said uh, Brady and Manning, they will hook up in what seems to be their annual get together on November 21st up in Foxborough. We have Reggie Wayne with catches, Calvin Johnson. These two players have been regulars at the Pro Bowl here over the years. They were teammates at Miami. Reggie was the host for Andre's visit at the U when uh, Johnson was being recruited, and they have since grown together, started him in the league, and been on the same AFC squad at the Pro Bowl. Like what uh, Reggie was telling us about Andre, he was uh, hosting him for his recruiting visit at Miami and said uh, when Andre was getting on the field, it was with the number twos at that time. Reggie was the starter. And when the twos would come in at a blowout and score, Reggie would go to the coach. Say, we need to get the ones back here. We got to keep that guy off the field. He's too good. He's going to keep the rest of us off the field. Big play for the Texans defense right here. They've got to get it stopped. Third and three. They bring pressure. Manning throws. Caught by Tammy for the first down at the 39-yard line. Absolutely remarkable trust. When you've got Jacob Tammy, the game on the line, third and three. Matched against Bernard Pollard, he beats him, and Manning throws a strike. This is not an easy throw wide out in the flat. You're a couple feet off on that one. It could go six the other way. This is the confidence, the trust that Peyton Manning has in all of his teammates. But Just they're throwing beautiful. the ball in this situation. They have nobody at the tight end position that can block. Nobody throws the ball this many times with a 10-point lead, 13-point lead. Inside of four minutes. <laughs> There's a run. Yeah. And James will be stopped by Amobi Okoye, and Houston will take its second time. See Peyton, Javaris, James, and Kai. Get back there. You're going to get the ball here in a oh, second. I really think this can be an Achilles heel for this football team. They have got to address this area, the four minute drill. When you have the ball and a lead, all you got to do is beat the clock. That's the enemy. And when you can't run the football and you have a lot of backup players playing, if you're playing a team with a great secondary, good luck. That's an area I'm sure they've got to address. It hurt them last week against the Redskins, if you recall. Yep. They gave the ball back to Donovan McNabb in one of those two-minute drills you're talking about. Yeah, this is life in the NFL now. I mean, injuries mount up over the course of the season. So, I mean, obviously, they've got to go search. Who knows what the situation is with Eldridge right now when he'll be able to come back. But certainly, I'm Bill Polian as good as there is in the business, by the way. He'll find a way to, to remedy the problem. But I agree with you, John. They got to run it when they get a 13-point lead. Oh, in the president of the Colts, Hall of Fame executive, multiple teams to the Super Bowl, the three Buffalo Super Bowl teams that he was there for. Then they went to another after he left. Championship teams in Carolina, obviously two Super Bowls with the Colts. Downfield for Reggie Wayne, too tall. And John, to your point, second and 16, you're throwing there because of the lack of ability to line up and run, and you're giving them timeout. You're stopping the clock after just eight seconds. Yeah, and I don't understand that. You know, Jacob Tammy can't be much more than 235 pounds, and when you want to run the football, you might as well have four wide receivers on the field right now. You just saw the Mobi Okoye create a four-yard loss on a penetration play. Tough to run the ball against a blitz with one back set. You got an idea of what blitz pressure they were going to show there. Manning for Tammy. Incomplete. Zach Dials took him all the way down. And we'll get fourth down. Again, two plays took 12 seconds. But what you don't see in the chess match, when you look at this Texans defense right now, because you have Brian Cushing, you don't see him adjusting. You'll see the middle of the field open right here. Peyton sees that. He wants to get to a play where he can attack the middle of the field. He's going to get Zach Dials on Jacob Tammy. That's a matchup you like going down the hole. But Peyton just gets a little bit too much air under that one. No Cap reason, no reason to throw it in that situation. Kapanos, first time punting with the Colts because of the suspension of McAfee. They edge pressure and bring it in. The lefty gets rid of it with a terrific kick. Sent Jacoby Jones all the way back. He didn't feel it. It hits his helmet. 
recovered by Houston at the four yard line. So they've made a tough situation tougher. Well, I'm surprised Jacoby Jones did not catch yep. that football. I mean, he has big play potential. He let it bounce over his head. He's a guy that you can always have the possibility of a big play. There, doinks off his helmet. That's a live ball right now. One really good hustle by Antoine, by Antoine Molden. Molden. Yep. But this Capino, how about him? He comes in here as the punter, does an excellent job kicking off for the Indianapolis okay. Colts. How many guys have stepped up from obscurity tonight for the Indianapolis Colts? McAfee, the punter, was suspended for a game after the arrest for public intoxication, which is a quick suspension because it happened on a work night. They had practiced the next day. Job out of his own end zone, get some space with Foster to the eight yard line. That's why the suddenness of the suspension. The guy was found swimming at 5 a.m. in the Central Canal downtown on a day where there was work the next day for the Colts. Second and five, need two scores, got to go quick. Schaub finds space, finds Foster, first down at the 20. And we're often quick to point out poor clock management. Freddie Gary Kubiak for using two tight time timeouts there that saved about a minute 15 on a running play clock and game clock. Give your team every chance to win. Third in a row for Foster. First down to 30. Now this is good old fashioned Tampa 2 coverage. Tony Dungy must be proud sitting up there. <laughs> no big plays. A serious amount of heat on the quarterback. Everybody has vision on the football. When Schaub lays it off, they rally and knock the back down immediately. Look at this gang tackle. To Owen Daniels who's been incredibly quiet tonight. Might be his first catch of the night. Well, you keep checking it down sooner or later that middle linebacker is going to get a little bit antsy. Well bracket 58. He's the linebacker. He's playing 20 to 22 yards down the field at times. Job one more time to Foster for four. These guys are getting gassed. 220 to go. Foster out Ward in. Only had 10 to try to get an 11th in. Oh. The clock continues to run to the two minute warning. That's a shame. And the right tackle, Eric Winston, was wondering why was the official coming out and saying something to try to stop us there? Help us, help us up from a play. Texas down 13, trying to drive and set up an onside kick. Back here in Indianapolis and Lucas Oil Stadium hosting the Super Bowl 2012. The Colts hope that their run to play in a Super Bowl they host is a little more successful than Dallas's current adventure. Oh boy. That's at been the, a debacle. Yep. At the two. One timeout left for Houston. Down 13. Job to Derek Ward. Looking for the sideline. Some space. Let me go back to that last play. The NFL reminding us that. When you sub as an offense, you get a chance as a defense to respond with a sub. Although I was counting, Houston was bringing on an 11th player after they subbed, they only had 10. So I don't think the game should have been held or stopped there for the moment for the Colts getting an opportunity to sub. They were one shy. In any case, for brighter minds. <laughs> That's true. Second and seven. Freeney held off for the moment. Shot downfield. Andre Johnson goes out and gets it at the 30. Again, a score and an onside kick chance as Johnson continues to limp on that right ankle. That's a great throw by Schaub. Mathis was on his heels, and Andre extends and catches it away from his body. Johnson can barely run a pattern here as Schaub rolls out and throws complete to Foster and Johnson may have to come off the field he cannot run a pattern at all here boy and he is hurting right now I mean he is sucking it up to play in this game he's been wobbling on that ankle all night but watch this grab right here now he settles in that hole in his cover too goes up and makes a fantastic catch brings all his weight down on the ankle well this guy's a warrior though over 100 yards he's off to the bench David Anderson in Job is it all eight passes on this drive. 
And the ninth one goes through the hands of Jacoby Jones. And Andre Johnson's been the go-to guy in these clutch situations. Against Washington, the touchdown to tie it. Against Kansas City, the touchdown to win the game. Not having him on the field, big loss for the Texans. This coverage is so loose right now here on third down. I would not be surprised to see the Texans give it to Foster and then clock it and stop the clock. Looks like a lot of room to run. Good call, Coach. Foster first down and more to the 15-yard line. Shops following to clock it. He'll kill it, stop the clock, and the Texans are over there on their sidelines getting their hands team ready. 1-10 to go. And Schaub will tell him to huddle up and what a killer to not have Andre Johnson, who we've seen, as you said, in those situations, Jaws, play through that pain, especially the Washington game. He's limping all over the place. High right ankle sprain that has bothered him throughout. Look at him going back in. This, this guy's something else now. You, you know he's hurting, but he'll, he'll lay it on the line for his team. He's one of those special kind of guys. Very quiet, very unassuming. But I'll tell you what, when he goes on that field, there are very few better than him, if any. This drive started at the four. Job slinging it. Owen Daniels had it pop in and out of his hands. It hit the ground. It's incomplete. With 64 seconds to go. And this is when you need to call your best two deep beaters. That's what you're seeing repeatedly. That's a well-thrown ball that Owen Daniels, if he catches that clean, he's got a chance to score with it. But right now, the, t the Texans are in their red zone mentality, and Gary Kubiak has some of the best Tampa 2 route beaters in football, and it's time to dial one yeah, up. He better right have now. it now. That's why teams don't play this Tampa 2 anymore. Good offense quitters have, have coordinators have plays to beat it. Schaub, look out for Freeney, who got him and got the forced fumble and got the ball game. Closing time. This is what it's all about for the Indianapolis Colts. The strip sack, and that'll end this ball game. Dwight Freeney is relentless. You'll see him coming off the edge against Dwayne Brown. Schaub tries to move outside the pocket, but Freeney, just an incredible intuitive sack, strip. Yeah, but Larry Coyer, look, he goes to double A's, and that forces the back to look inside. Nobody can chip over here. That creates a one-on-one -on -one for Freeney. Just like Dandy Don used to say. Turn, turn out the turn light. The light. To... I can't sing, but. Yeah, thanks. Boy. Dwight Freeney. <laughs> you tried that last That's week. a trifecta. You hit the quarterback, you cause a sack, and you get your 39th strip. He dominated this football game tonight. I'm glad I had him on the bus. <laughs> There's John Tierlink, his coach. Very proud of him. You think the bus is the determining factor in that? Oh, I think the guys, <laughs> guys know when they come on that bus, they got to deliver. Yeah. But and give Freeney credit. He grew up idolizing the great Lawrence Taylor, and he looks like Lawrence Taylor. I was having a good night. Why didn't you mention that name? A sack to start in the first series for Freeney and one to end. Indianapolis and Houston split their season series. Houston wins at home by 10. Indianapolis wins at home by 13. And their first game without Dallas Clark, another of their big players on offense. Indianapolis gets the victory. Jim Caldwell told his team this week, hey, this is life in the NFL. Y'all were spoiled here with the great run last year, winning the first 14 games. And they're able to come through the injuries and get the victory to move to 5-2 and two and the lead in the AFC South. And for what it's worth, Indianapolis is tied with Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Kansas City, and the Jets. One game behind the Patriots in the AFC. Michelle will uh, talk to Peyton Manning. You'll hear that on SportsCenter. Plus a recap of the Giants winning the World Series. Full coverage from Indianapolis and Arlington coming up next on SportsCenter. With Ron Jaworski, John Gruden, Michelle Zafoya, and our Monday Night Football team, Mike Tirico, saying good night from Indianapolis. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. See you for the Steelers and Bengals in one week. See you next week in Cincinnati! ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League.